Hi, Kelsey. We live. <laughs> it's official. When you press the button, you're officially alive. I think I can hear myself in your. No, no. Oh. Okay, no. Okay. Yeah, I've got my. No, that was just me. <laughs> okay. I'm speaking so loud. My, I'm echoing in my own head. <laughs> right. I feel weird. Like, oh, it's my glasses. I'm so used to wearing glasses now because I work all the time that, like, uh, when I don't have them, like, on my head or, or like, in, on my face, it feels like I'm, like, am I forgetting something? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about doing like the LASIK or whatever, but just decided, uh, nah, I'm, I'm at that old point where it's, like, nah, it's just a part of me. So yeah, I'm just going to stick with everyone, it. Everyone at my age wears readers now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's the problem. I need new glasses because I, I, I'm like having to do like this or like even yeah. like take my glasses off because I can't see close up anymore. Yeah, it's it's well, and the, the fine problem. detail, the fine detail that I put in my work is like um, I see double. <laughs> when I'm trying to do like I'm trying to like ink like an eyelid on a head that's like freaking this small. <laughs> I see we got two people here, Prater7 and HR. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you guys doing? What is up? How is everyone this morning? We'll have lots of people here. This is going to be a very popular uh, stream. Daniel is phenomenal. I'm kind of, I'm looking forward to it. One of the things I was talking to you about behind the scenes is that um that that the thumbnail for this looks like James Heron to me. And I, I don't think I right. I knew that they kind of had similarities, but uh, man, they are really close. And I don't know that they're necessarily inspired by each other as well. It's like just a, yeah. I don't know, something, something's happening I didn't there. Know, I didn't really like, like I would say over the last like year, maybe two years, probably two years, the COVID is like a big blur, the mm. COVID years, but um, <laughs> yeah, like, Basically, from YouTube and Patreon, I got turned on to Trad Moore, James oh, Aaron, yeah. mm -hmm. um, Daniel Warren Johnson. There was a whole. There's a whole. It's the new guard. Artists. Yeah, they're all really, really good and very creative. And honestly, it's work that I wouldn't necessarily, on paper, uh, mm -hmm. think that Marvel or DC like. Like they, they almost feel like they teeter on like underground comic art just a right. little bit. It's a little it's a little weirder than what what you know you picture like dc feeling comfortable publishing not not that all of these guys are phenomenal though don't misunderstand what i'm saying i'm just saying that like weird styles you know you kind of always worry for the artist like is it going to be too much of um uh like an indie look yeah i think that's part of the appeal is that they're not you know the same thing you've you've seen all before you know there's it's like a new uh look at things so it's like on one hand, you got uh, people who are doing, uh, you know, tracing 3D models and then, you know, and it looks boring and kind of stale. But then on the other hand, you got these guys who are flying by the seat of their pants. They're like widening out whole parts of the page and redoing. They're pasting up. It reminds me more of like the way comics used to be done yeah. back in the day where it was fast. It was raw and it was immediate from the gut. So I like it. <laughs> yeah i do too it, it, one the the cool thing is is so i had done about two or three weeks ago i did about an hour and 15 minutes of daniel warren johnson for patreon it was right after we did the paul pope video because because remember those were the two choices we were looking at as we were going to do either paul pope or daniel mm -hmm. and um uh, similarities there pope, as well yeah yeah, and so when we well, and, and Daniel actually has said that that Paul Pope is the um, uh, uh, artist that he likes. Oh, okay. Because I was I wasn't sure if that was a coincidence, you know, like a coincidence that there were just like little little isms, you know. I mean, I think mm -hmm. we we all end up having that. Um. So so uh, do you want to let's we'll get into the art quick because I have a ton of stuff to look at, and I'm telling you, Kelsey, this is this is really seriously going to be super fun. It's the the well, work. I didn't want to stop when I was, I, like I said, I did, I was planning on doing like a 30 minute video for Patreon. I went an hour and 15 minutes and I could have easily done another hour. Well, here it is. We're going to do it right now live. Yeah. Well, but that, well, that's on. what's fun. Like, the first time I'd ever seen Daniel Warren Johnson, I kind of had to set this up a little bit. Me personally, yeah. like I have a very limited knowledge of what he's done. I had, uh, when he was doing a book called Extremities, uh, somebody was like, you got to check this guy out. I think you'll really like him. 
And I checked it out. I was like, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. You know, and then and then he did Murder Falcon, right? Which blew me away. I was I haven't seen I've only seen like maybe two issues of it, but I loved the character. And I was like, okay, this guy, this guy definitely has uh, a foot in the fun, you know, like extremities seem kind of like dark. It seemed like a lot of indie books I'd seen at the time. But then he went on to do Murder Falcon, and then he's got this wrestling book of his own, and it's like, okay, yeah, he's got this Saturday morning cartoon ho- ho- core to yeah. his stuff, you know, that that makes it a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, oh, and yeah. I had the Beta Ray Bill mini. I haven't seen that one yet, but yeah, I I, cool. I have I have a little bit of the Beta Ray Bill, so we can okay, we'll, cool. We'll, I'll have to be careful not to open too many files, so I don't um overwhelm us. But um, one thing I wanted to address in the comment section was oh, hold on, wrong one. Um. So uh, the Last of Us drops on HBO tonight. Um, mm. You know, I I always I always will throw this in, but Blaster Kid is is heavily heavily influenced by video games. There's no two ways about it. It's a bunch of video mm. games, and it's a very abstract influence. But um, I I you know for me when I tell a story, I want that feeling of when you play a great like um, game like, like like The Last of Us or Resident Evil. Final Fantasy or Fallout. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kelsey's heard me mention Fallout a million times. I love Fallout. I'm still playing Fallout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so, so I have a Blaster Kid page in progress that I wanted to show. Mm. So this you gotta go not, full screen. Give us the uh, full. Hold on. Well, well, I don't have a scan of it this time because it's not oh, okay. fully done. Um, but um, so what what ended up happening this week was it was interesting. I started laying out this page right like right after we were done with the last show. And about two days into laying it out, there were like three panels that I just couldn't couldn't get them where I wanted them to be. It was really like like I just it wasn't it didn't it I I knew it wasn't great or like in my mind like like there's there's um I get stuff done, but then if it doesn't if I don't feel that there's like a level of like kick assness to it, then then I'll keep working on it. So so I ended up working on another page for two days. And then I was like, okay, you can't, you can't um, let this page defeat you. So I went back to this page and, and got it all laid out the way that I wanted it. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so, so here, I'll, I'll let me go full screen and I'll show it. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about what's on the page because when I'm finished, I'll, I'll explain the story elements that are going on. Mm-hmm. But this will give you an opportunity to, um, to see my pen, like the pencil. Ba, 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 ba. Ooh. Ooh, whoa, holy smokes. Yeah. So like I said, I don't want to say too much, but it's it's getting to the point where it's done getting there. How's that gray? How are you doing that gray? Is that gray uh, or is that like lines? Pencils. Oh no, I mean like down at the bottom, you got this around oh, oh, her. Oh, it's, all, it's all hatching. Good lord, it's, man. It's all it's all like very fine hatching. It looks like it's dripping with ink, like literally. <laughs> yeah, that was, well, that was what I was trying to do. I was trying to get like a splatter effect um, with it. So, so here, let's get back into a double head. Uh, really beautiful. Quick first. Um, so, so you know, um, a couple of weeks ago, I was going through Greg Capullo's um, Instagram, and he has all these short videos of him drawing. And there was a pencil that he was using, and so I ordered them. So, oh, I have, nice. These pencils are great. So it's um. So I keep bending the Mitsubishi right. makes a pencil. I, I didn't know that either. So it's a Mitsubishi HB. These pencils are so good because they're um, and then I bought these too. This is the one I'm using right now. These are uni. Ah, okay. Um, like Uniball, like made by Uni. Yeah, and so so this is what I'm using right now. What's great about these pencils is they're very, very soft. It's an HB lead and it goes down mm. like butter, but they don't smear. So oh really? Got, oh, you have you have the advantage because what what I what I had problems with for a really long time is, um, well you you've said this in passing and I do believe it, it's true. Um, I have more of a painterly approach in particular to pencils, and if I start mm. using a hard lead, um, I seize up because I start thinking of it linearly mm. instead of uh, sculpting wise. Right. And so so I'd always been trying to find a pencil that I could use almost like um like wet paint. But the the problem was it would always smear everywhere. Yeah, I got those um, those pencils that are all uh, what do you call it? Uh, all lead, 
and I love them. Uh, but they uh, they took here they are. Yeah, these like all lead pencils. Right, uh, prog Progresso, like the soup, makes these great pencils as well. Right, <laughs> all these other companies, but now it smears. It smears horribly, so you gotta like yeah. I, have, I have to actually draw with it like this, you know, just careful not to like touch the paper. <laughs> well, well, I, think, I think the problem for me is the fact that like like to get through a page will take me like probably three days, three or four days, mm. and. and you know, day two, <laughs> the lead is looking grim. And by day yeah. three, and you've got half the page inked and stuff that you penciled like four days earlier, it just is like, I can't even yeah. tell what I drew. And then I'm having to redraw it. And then I've got, you know, three drawings and like a little tiny area. Or like I said, I mean, like this lady's face, these the, the eye socket on this, this face is so tiny. And I mean, I have the mm. lid, I have the pupil, I have the whatever you call that little... That little Dog. thing, that little knot thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's, <laughs> there's like four four levels of detail, like there, and um, man, it was killing me. But these pencils are awesome, so I would definitely recommend them. But yeah, um, again, I'm using the Uni um, these right now. Yeah, I want to try oh, that. I want to. The... They come in a little green box, they, like they're 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 wrapped. They come. They I like come that in... uh, Mitsubishi. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, I wanna, those. Yeah, were I want to try the below. Mitsubishi one. Yeah, that looks great. Especially if you could draw like the HB but not smear. Like I'm oh, curious. Yeah. Soup pencils sound like a depression era thing. <laughs> it would give the them progresso. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. And and he says Stadler Lumo Color permanent crayons or crayons don't smear and they're great for texture. Okay. And take check this out. I'm, uh, go ahead and ramp a little bit. I'm gonna bring up yeah, this one got, uh, video that David. I'm sorry, David Williams uh, posted a video of a new pen I wanted to show you uh, okay, yeah. that looks amazing, and I want to mess with it. And since we're talking about someone who's very ink uh, ink happy, uh, it might be fun. Uh, <laughs> um, I guess he's under Brohawk. Brohawk. Always has been. It confuses me if I see him using his real name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here it is. Okay, it's called the Zig Calligraphy Pen. Oh, I've heard um, of Zig. I've never used that though. Let me bring them up. Uh, you could check this out because I, I want to get this. I want to try this out. Um, present arms. Okay. Oh, is it going to come up in its it? own window? It's all backwards. <sighs> Hold on. I was, Here dude, I was, I was stressing so hard the last two days though that I was bumming out that I wasn't going to have the page done for for the show but in my defense i did spend two and a half days on another piece look at david williams in this <laughs> i know what's going on with the hat what is going on with my computer i don't have the audio on and i'm hearing the audio check this out oh no that's yeah, what i'm gonna i'm gonna put this as the main the thing pans. these are amazing need the camera angle on the other side uh of his hand here we go so you could do like these thin lines, right? Or you could do the zigzag fat line. I'm pretty sure oh. uh, Ashley Ashley Williams is using yeah. her... Ashley Wood. Ashley Wood. What did I say? Williams. <laughs> Ashley Williams. That's a porn star, probably. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I was looking at his latest book, and I'm like, all of these lines are in there. Like, I and I knew he was using some kind of calligraphy yeah. pen, but I had no idea what. I could never find it. I'm pretty sure. He's using okay. this or something on, like this. On this page, I threw in that technique that you like with the side of the brush. The drippy, the stuff that you said looked like drippy ink was the Will's yeah. Portacio panel border um, thing. I yeah, love I, that I, stuff. I definitely want to go No oh, smear. And, wow, are you kidding me? No smear or very uh, little. Yeah, so it was a Zig. It's called the Zig. What was the rest of the name of it, Kelsey? Zig, Zig. Calligraphy Pen. Calligraphy yeah. Pen. Here you go, Studio um, Rob Roy. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, so I'm I'm definitely gonna like uh, experiment a little with that. It looks like fun. I mean, I love a I love a like a tool that uh, that I can get a lot of different variation out of. Uh, much like a brush. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna open. Well, Photoshop's already open. I've got a bunch of stuff from his Instagram up. So let's get into the Daniel Warren Johnson. Let's do this. Stuff. 
All right, everyone, take a shot. This is going to be insane. <laughs> <laughs> or take a sip. Yeah, of I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm definitely excited because, like, I've been watching some. Uh, oh, it's so good. Kelsey. Watching some of his videos and. Oh, I yeah, love... yeah. I... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I just love how immediate. You know, he he just scribbles and and does things. Oh, this is my whoa. thumbnail. <laughs> this is my thumbnail. But here, we'll look at the piece though, because the piece is awesome. I swear that's Daniel Warren John, or uh, that almost looks like James Heron, the, the guy in the background. I think. Right, uh, the so spot. This, yeah. We'll Everything go. about it looks like. See, that's a, there's some crazy similarities in like how they approach action, you know, and speed. The closest I've ever come to working around anyone like Daniel Warren Johnson would be Carlos Deanda, where like you can just tell. I I hate to use the word natural because Daniel clearly has worked very hard on his art, but like they're so confident and they have their things so down. I mean, you could literally just put them in any scenario and they can draw this stuff. Like just it's like incredible to see. Yeah, they he talks a little bit. I caught a video once where he talks about his style and where it comes from. And it, he uh, said it it pretty much came from this is the only way I can do uh the kind of work, uh the kind the amount of work right uh, to make a living and support his family. So he developed this much faster way of doing things, but in you know, by virtue of that he created his own thing, his own voice, you know. Yeah, that's actually pretty profound. Okay, so let's see. Um, so I have lots of con sketches. All of the work that I'm showing right now is from Daniel's Instagram. So I've got links in the description box for Daniel's Instagram, his shop, and also his official website. And um, definitely give him a fall if you haven't. So, but I, I would believe that this is a commission sketch, but his commission sketches are just phenomenal. They're so creative, the ideas. Jason Moore says, yo, what up, guys? I love the spontaneity and chaos in Daniel's work. I admire the way he just totally attacks the paper without hesitation every single time. It's inspiration for inspiring for sure. I agree. So this yeah. looks like an astronaut that's been lost in space, and he's just been drinking whiskey, and, like, he's just... Yeah, he doesn't have a... Yeah, that's the only way he'll survive. He doesn't have any food, but he's got plenty of whiskey for some reason. <laughs> yeah, and the bottle's, like, this bottle's, like, floating. He should have... It would have been cool if he had a couple more bottles um, with, yeah. like, zero gravity, but I don't think that that's what the... the I don't think this scene is zero gravity, though. Next time, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Boba Fett, this is good. Yeah, fun. Look at this just random dry brush. <laughs> Across it, man, I'd be afraid of messing that up, but no, Dude, he'll, he'll white out huge areas too. Like, if he doesn't like a leg or something, it's just yeah. gone, and then he, he does it. I'm a, that's why I'm always out for like uh the next white out because <laughs> I'm, I'm getting to that point where I just want to attack that page too and just do the same thing. But sometimes, uh, messing with the white out gets to be messy, right? Or not so these, detailed enough. Hmm. These what we're looking at right now is mostly stuff from 2015. So this is the beginning of his Instagram. And we'll look at like 15 or 20 pieces from the beginning. And then we'll look at the most current Instagram stuff. And you can see the evolution of his work. So in some of this stuff, I see maybe Ed McGinnis or Joe Matarera too. Mm. Yeah, just the, the heftiness of the figure, right? Right. I mean, you figure those those two guys were pretty iconic. I don't know if this is oh, this, this is uh, another thing that, of his work that is really admirable is his sense of design. Like uh, right. he ha actually has a very good sense of design, and this piece really illustrates that uh, well. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. I wouldn't have never thought of that. <laughs> that looks yeah. like it's real. Did he watercolor that? Look at the paper. Um, no, yeah. it's got the logo on there though. Yeah. It. I don't it, know. That's. Yeah, because the, the edge of the, on, it looked like it was ripped off of something. Yeah, maybe it was printed on watercolor paper. I don't know. That that logo is definitely computer done. Yeah, I don't know. It's really That's interesting. Cool. Yeah, it's a nice. That'd be a great way to going. sell prints on uh, rough watercolor paper. That'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, actually, a little more fancy. Yeah, because that stuff's expensive. <laughs> hey, a little uh, Nausicaa. Yeah. Cute. And oh, and this was another thing I kept joking about. I was like, dude, this guy uses more screen tone than any person I've ever seen, and it's expensive stuff. 
I but, love screen tone and I really want to mess with it, but I mean, is do you have? I mean, is there comparably priced uh, variants or like do you have to oh, go? It's, like, it's about eight dollars a sheet. So I'd say six to eight dollars a sheet. And I mean, how big is a sheet? See, eight and a half by eleven. Oh my god. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. It's really expensive. Well, and and again, this is from 2015. You, you, you're going to start to see more and more screen tone. And then there's a point where basically just about every single, uh, even con sketch that he does, he uses screen tone on. I'm not even exaggerating. Well, he, he does a lot of commissions and a lot of, so he must. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> He's a guitar man too. It's great. That, so he must obviously i mean he, he reinvests into his work which is great you know yeah. i'd love to invest in some some zip and stuff like that i'm pretty uh, sure dustin, like clue me in. dustin rogers um was saying that he um he uh like kind of rolls the price of the commission you're kind of paying for the the materials too jasper plan nine says the dude makes his own zipatone Oh, he makes his do own. Buy, do you buy adhesive uh, paper and then print on it? Wow. How do you do that? Yeah, that would be the way. Oh, this is very Kelsey-like. You mean the dude? You mean Mike, uh, Steve Rude, the dude? <laughs> the dude yeah, this is definitely, yeah, this is up my alley right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, got, it's got vibes of like how you draw. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. Oh, man. I wish I could draw. It looks like small. That. It looks yeah. really small. It does. It does. How do you get that white pen? See, people get white pens to do things that I cannot get them to do. I, I think he uses, he uses the Pentel um, little um, blue. Uh, not, I don't. Not that's not exclusively, but but he definitely uses this. I love this tree. Oh yeah. It almost looks like he used the straw like effect. I I know it isn't, but you know, like where you blow the ink with the straw. Oh yeah, yeah, it does. Look at the shapes that he's using in the tree branches. Man, they are cool. See, I use um, a jelly roll. Number right. five from Japan. Sakura. Right. Those are good. It works okay. I always mean, like to tease it. And I see other people doing it like a pen. And I'm like, mine doesn't work like a pen. Yeah, you know what I mean? The ink I'm using it over. I, I did um oh, wow. I did a video I did a video hack on um those pens. What you need to do oh, is um get, get get the hand wipes like you would get it like a fast food restaurant yeah. and wipe the tip off really good before you use it with the alcohol. Oh, and it works. Okay. It'll make it flow much better. Okay. And this is great. So much energy. Yeah. This is reservoir dogs, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's Mr. Um uh What's the guy's name in the back seat, Mister? Uh, Mister. Mister. Blonde. Could be. <laughs> I can't. Remember their color. I can't remember their color coding. It doesn't really look like Eric, uh, Roth. Eric Roth. No, no, no. What's his name? <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, oh, so oh I know who you're talking movie. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's it's really cool though. Yeah, you could definitely oh. see the Paul Pope in that one. Look at the his. Oh, wow. A red Man, pencil so cool i've been seeing like there's a japanese artist that uses a red and a blue pencil where he'll do his underdrawing in red yeah. and then he doesn't erase it he just flips it over there's a blue on the other side it's a red on one side blue on the other and he really? just uh tim Ra, thanks mark uh I, I, oh, Pra yeah, yeah, Praven. Yeah. harvey can't tell yeah so uh but he flips it over and does a tighter drawing with the blue pencil over the red and then he'll pull out his inks over that so he never erases anything and you can clearly see all the levels wow yeah is, so is he using paper paper or comic paper um like paper paper uh, yeah oh, i think he's using well, well i'm picturing I don't know what like, paper paper is <laughs> well um uh what i meant was um like like a printer paper because comic book board like if you drew with red pencil on one side of the board and then you flipped it over and you like light box the blue pencil over that um uh, might be no he literally he literally does it all in the same thing that's why he oh, uses okay. red I, for an underdrawing blue to I, tighten it up and then or or pencil and then uh, ink over the top of that yeah that's a nice figure yeah that's good i like all that yeah. sloppy that looks like sharpie or something <laughs> so so this is interesting so so when i when i first started doing sequentials this, this is many years ago one, one of one of my attempts where i failed 
um, mm. I would I would be able to draw stuff not as good as this to be clear, but but I would get an, a look like this with Sharpie, and I never mm -hmm. knew how to take this to like a finished tight drawing. I, that's how I've been doing it. What you do, like I'll do this, and then I'll go in with the small p the pen and tighten uh -huh. up tighten up the areas and add you know some rendering here and there and it, it's amazing how fast you can tighten that up yeah but what what happens for me is i fall in love with every little oh no you can't you can't be precious <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh i'm like if i don't have this little loop shape right here and this little triangle diamond with the pointy tip it's gonna nah, it, yeah. it, it feels like it keeps losing the cool fact now the whole point of this style of this way of working is to find those happy accidents and live with them you know yeah you oh, can't no, control no. it too much yeah but what i'm saying is like to take this to a tighter drawing i want to yeah, keep yeah. every little nuance of the thing and that's why i get yeah. so many weird, i get so many weird shapes in my art is i keep all the um thing this is really cool little See, this is kind of what i'm talking about he does it right on the page with different pencil uh, colors yeah. to to clearly differentiate everything for himself you know yeah it's really but then he doesn't even stick with that he'll go with the pencil you know i don't know it doesn't seem to be a lot of uh structure you know he's just kind of like yeah whatever's close by him at any given time <laughs> i mean look at these little gestures of these guys running in the green they're so nice yeah it's great and, yeah, and I, I would have go ahead Oh, I was gonna say Edvin Bukovic. Um, this kind of oh yeah, me. yeah yeah. I love old old Eddie stuff, man. So good. Edvin Bukovic. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's another uh, that's another Kelsey piece right there. I know. <laughs> well, that's why I I figured like this is and dude, we're looking at old shit. This is from like eight years ago. This oh, guy is yeah, like twenty fifteen. Yeah. Wow. He's a monster now. I mean, he, he was back then too. This is like anybody that would get to this point is great, you know, already. <laughs> uh, Phil's in the chat and he says that he's a, a Chicago guy. Uh, Daniel uh, is? Daniel Warren Johnson. Yeah, he's a Chicago right. guy. I didn't know that. Chi Town. Wow. That's really cool, right? So I guess the orange doesn't show up on uh reprint either right i guess you can well, you can remove any color just by like mm. um kind of like how i how when i turn pages gray um you know you can isolate the that channel and then just mm. lower the saturation and the and brighten it and it usually it'll, it'll go away pretty good but see i find that you end up with noise in yeah, like when you get cool. too dark in areas but i guess with his artwork the noise is kind of a benefit so i could try it really quick here let, let me just do it really fast I'll, so what i do is i'll go to control u and then i'm going to go into i'll take the red channel and i'm going to lower the saturation and then i brighten it and then i just i'll go through all these different channels control u i'll go into yellows take this out and take this mm. out now obviously this is a very messy sketch and the control right. you i'm going to grab magenta i'll brighten that or remove the saturation then i lighten it and mm. then the next thing that i do is i would go in and any gray pixels i take control l for levels i'm going to grab the far right thing and if i grab i like i'll mm. zoom in so you can see it if i grab like say this shade of gray it remove all gray okay. that's that gray to that and you can okay. you, you can take it down to a pretty good line drawing <clears throat> yeah so there's yeah, a little real color. quick you got a you got a super chat from dustin rogers for five dollars thanks dustin and I dustin love... is the one that owns, he owns a daniel warren johnson piece that may be in this video today oh okay cool he says i love daniel warren johnson can't wait to watch on replay his commissions fees more than cover his screen tone usage oh, okay love his yeah. energy he draws like a fearless beast yeah yeah uh daniel or um dustin had said that on on um in, or on patreon i meant to reply to him um but uh yeah so dustin which piece do you have i think it was a star yeah. wars related one man i'm always impressed when people can knock out sketch covers that actually feel like a comic book cover I and mean, it's so cool that's the thing about him he seems to have a really good really high success rate uh, just like um a lot of these guys i guess because they're they're they draw constantly 
Uh-huh. Um, but like you, your guys, like um, who's a guy who's I would classify in these guys' wheelhouse, but uh, really advanced is um, Chris Samney. Right, and people uh, have been like, trying for us to do a Samney video too. I love, love, love Samney stuff, but it, it, it's almost like he's too prolific. Now, where right. it's like I'm starting to like, yeah, I, when I want that Samney flavor, I'll go seek him out. There's probably ten new things I haven't seen. You know, <laughs> right, right. I like how he went right over the Star Wars logo too. That's actually pretty badass. See, he's not afraid of that whiteout, man. But I'm like glossy paper. I'd be terrified. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marvel, Marvel sketch covers can really be hit in this, depending yeah. on the paper stock that they use. This is a nice little drawing. Yeah, good armor design. Yeah, he's really yeah. good with his design. I mean, even not just his page layout, but his like character design. Yeah, really he's creative. he's got he's got a library of imagery in his head that is just really phenomenal. It's uh, so HR cool. says uh Sammy and Ton Tonsic, uh, I think that's the um, is he a Croatian guy? Uh, he does like real heavy, he works a lot on um, uh, I think it's if it's the guy I'm thinking of, it's the guy that has been doing a lot of uh stuff for BPRD or not BPRD, but what am I thinking? Oh, Lobster, wow. Lobster Johnson, okay. Stuff. Uh, I, yeah, I Lobster that. Johnson artist, Michael Mo, yeah. I really like so the angle of the head that he's got here because it's like we're above it and it's at a little bit of a skewed angle. So it's not like a classic side view. Yeah, this is great. Well, oh, like, this is um, this is from Halo, right? That's a Halo guy. I never played yeah. Halo. I've, I've watched some uh, oh, walkthroughs. Of it, but... Halo was great. Yeah. Yeah, it was I, didn't, I didn't have the, the system. I'm mean, or I guess the I, Xbox. Have, well, I yeah, did have Xbox. Xbox. I had a 360. I, yeah, you can still nice. play the, the original game. Probably oh. still it holds up. Oh, nice. Big it's moon, not a full too. moon. Yeah, it's not a full moon. <laughs> the moon is coming to Earth. <laughs> look at those Flatter. buildings almost look like the way he does the pipe. Right. Look at that, man. I, I would draw like a regular rain pipe, and he's like bending it all up. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's what. Wow. Oh, oh, this right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it doesn't. It's yeah. like it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just make it a wiggly looking cool pipe. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at this stuff. It almost gives you permission to just. Yeah. Not you know to just go crazy. I agree. I agree. Okay, so we're gonna do five more of these, and then we're gonna move to his more recent Instagram stuff, and then we'll okay. get into some books. So we've we've seen where he kind of started at, we'll say, because mm. this is the beginning of his Instagram. So guy came in, he's already awesome. We we all can agree this is good yeah. shit. We're not we're not seeing a ton of screen tone. Looks like there's a little bit on Batman's body here. But no, those are lines. Shit. He's straight up oh. drawing that. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. When I zoomed in, I was getting a little bit of a more uh, vibe. Oh yeah, yeah. Beautiful no, Batman. beautiful Batman. I'm wondering what this piece represents. Like, what is that crowbar? What was that used for? I yeah, mean, his parents were shot, so <laughs> yeah, that is interesting. What do you think it is? Let's see. I don't the, know. It's, that, that's the first I, criminal he ever busted, you know, was using a crowbar to attack some person in an alley. I don't know. Chat, chat, what is this? What's the crowbar? Does anyone know the, the significance of it? That's interesting. Oh, Phil says to kill Robin. Oh, uh, interesting. Jason Todd was killed with a crowbar. Interesting. Wow. I didn't know that. Little yeah, snow. everybody's got this. <laughs> Everyone knew. Yeah. Yeah. We're bad. A little people. self portrait. Yeah. I love the line. The line quality on this is beautiful. I like his little squiggly of frustration. Yeah, the frustration <laughs> pop bubble. <laughs> <laughs> and you notice that there's nothing. There's nothing on it. Like it's like it's like the thought is like. What what am I doing? You know, it's stress. But his coffee, uh, the smoke coming off his coffee is almost like a little heart. Like that's the I know I noticed that too. Going. <laughs> that's what gives you love. Okay, so let's let's. I'm gonna shut. I'm gonna shut all these. Cullen gonna... says clearly not comic pros. Yeah, we're <laughs> right. We draw them. We don't read them. <laughs> there's a lot of scripts. Great here, but don't worry, we're gonna get to more, more, more. I've read more, more comic scripts than I've read comic books. It's kind of weird to say that, but it's true. <laughs> I went overkill. I wasn't sure where. Look at all where... this. Oh, my God. No, I know. It's going to be the rare five-hour show. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, dude, I'm telling you. 
I just, we got to get to the more recent stuff because it's like I'm sure even for him, if he ever sees this, he'll be like, "Oh God, don't look at all the old stuff. Grab my new stuff." I wonder if he's like that. I guess they are. Everybody's like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you know, you, you like again. There's a lot of a lot of art. So some of my old stuff I like better than my new stuff. <laughs> I'd be happy yeah. if somebody looks at my old stuff and be like, oh, yeah, those are good times. <laughs> but you'll see how much screen tone he uses now. It's really interesting. Oh, yeah. I see him hanging with Simonson. I got to meet I Simonson. Was, yeah, Walter Simonson. It makes nice sense, guy. too. I could see some Walter Simonson in his work. Yeah, I guess with his design, yeah. With, like, the way he does energy and stuff. Real yeah. design-oriented. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Look, geez, Rich, how many of you got? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Hey, hanging with Kim Jong G. I know. Hey. It was like it's sad too because it was like he met him and then he reposted the picture when Kim passed away. I mm. still that that still is like man, I it's so sad that that guy's gone. He's so phenomenal. I wish I got a chance to meet him. He's he was a uh, what do they say? The candle burns twice as bright, burns half as long. I, I agree. So this is a color piece. He doesn't he doesn't do a ton of color commissions. It shows as far as I'd seen, but it's nice. You know, it's pretty cool. Wow. Who's this yeah, character? It's good. He, I wish he would experiment more. I thought it was Judge Dredd at first, but no. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure who this is. But he should Might do be. more color. Like I think he's got a natural style for painting. You know. So this is a Merry Christmas um, card that he did. <laughs> Weird card. <laughs> but it's kind of like again it sort of reminds me of something that you would do maybe not yeah a little bit far, yeah. but, but like, like it's got it's got some kelseyisms like this little area right here and it's the fun i, I like to bring the fun this could be um mm -hmm. what was what cecil's book called cash grab this looks oh, like cash, cash grab, grab yeah variant. like like a variant <laughs> i like the cheetah with the with the um <laughs> the christmas, yeah, christmas presents. presents so cute this is a non-denominational Christmas uh, card. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, look at this. this is another one with a ton of white. Look at how much white out he used on Wolverine. You can see that he had his arms out, like with the claws, like um, in different positions. Mm hmm. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I I'm gonna I'm championing that I want original <laughs> art with white out. If it doesn't have white out, I'm bored. No, I want yeah. white outs. I want paste ups. Uh, yeah. Let's change the original art game. Look how beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, Rich. Oh, no, I use I no I I use white out on my piece. I, oh, I okay. I, uh, I try not to, but um, but no, I, yeah. I do. I and I have a cutout panel on the one page. I told you that. I want the, uh, uh, at least one Kelsey beard hair stuck in the ink of every drawing I do now. Right. <laughs> and no, I I had I had one panel that I didn't like, and so I actually redrew it on another sheet of Bristol board, and then um glued it down on the on the final. I like the the fade. I'm wondering if that's a natural yellowing of the paper. Uh, or looks like like light like light play. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, on the like the the showroom floor. I saw um, Mitch uh, Brightweiser. He had a sketchbook and stuff like this, and he just did that coffee thing where he just set his coffee down and it spilled. And then oh, he took right. it up, and it was like a perfect coffee ring. I'm like, if I did that, I would totally ruin the piece. <laughs> right. Oh, and he kept it on the piece? Yeah, it was just a perfect coffee ring like you see, you know. Right. I'm like, oh, my God, I can never do that. This reminds yeah, me of a fat a, brush Gendi, work. Like, like Gendi Tar Tar Tartikoff, like, um, yeah. inspired, like um, art. All I'm right, moving to... along. It ain't that impressive. Come on. Oh, I know. <laughs> Let's get to I the actually, hot stuff. I like I like the the lines on it. I was like being mesmerized by it. Yeah, fat, fat, fast inking. What is this? Um, Weird. plug for his YouTube channel. You do do like a batch download or something? Um, no, you know I did these. Um, uh, in in Windows, like you can right click. Um, if you do it on your computer, and it'll save like about a hundred images of Instagram. Mm. Um, but they, they save as like weird files though. They stay, they save as a JPEG, but it's a JPEG Photoshop won't open. So I have to convert them all, um, to another format, but yeah, I mean, it's just save page as, um, and then I have to, I went through and did it like 50 times. <laughs> Pretty good. Chewy. I like good it a lot. Work. Yeah. Yeah. Chew Chewbacca. He's really like, I the, like whatever the stance. 
yeah, yeah, whatever paper he's using and whatever brush or pen he's using, he really is getting some beautiful like lines. Like I, I love the look. It almost reminds me a little bit of the metal pen that um Ashley Wood uses. Mm. Uh, they're they come in like green, yellowish orange caps. I think red and blue. I have them. They're pilot, pilot pens. I think or something. Hmm. And they're are they roller balls or something? What are they? No, they're um. It's like a metal blade, like a squared off blade. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, that's like that pen of uh, David Williams I was showing. Exactly, off, but, uh, exactly. But with a blade, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, they're they're like um. It's kind of like a squared off blade. Hmm. Look at the white. Is it like here. a oh, like a pen nib, like a uh, what do you call yeah. them? Like a croquil? yeah. Well, like, like imagine imagine the brush that has the um chisel tip. And then a pen mm. that's got a chisel pip. Some somewhere in the comment section mm. of what they're called. I think it's pilot pen. I I can pilot I, I have... parallel pens. Pa oh, parallel, parallel pens. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Cider. Oh, look at this. Si Sid Sid Pernicious. <laughs> I didn't get that name right. <laughs> look at this drawing. Yeah, that's that is man. I I'd be fussing over the proportions of all these people. Not him. Because like look at the green tone all over this thing. The proportions are really hard when you're doing a perspective where you know is this guy too big for the background? He's like bigger than Superman, who's in the foreground. I'm always fussing over all that stuff. And yeah. It seems like he's got a real natural sense of perspective. I mean, oh, this is so incredible. If he did this at a show, this guy is a savage. <laughs> you think this is a just a sketch piece? This has got to be like. I, I, I kind of think it is. But I don't know. It's hard to tell what's like like his published work versus sketch for me because it's like all kind of like like again he crafted a style that's um, he's able to deliver this. There's a lot of zip going on in there. Yeah, dude. Seriously, this guy. If you can zip. actually make your own. Like, I want to know about this. Like printing printing them on yeah. sticky paper. Yeah. Can uh, someone give us more details on that? Has he yeah. ever done a tutorial? Because um, I Kelsey knows I bought um about two hundred sheets of screen tone from a guy. Yeah, you were gonna scan them in for me. Right, <laughs> right. Well, I could, well, I, could do, I could do that if we can if we can reproduce it. That would be great. Oh, the stuff Look is at so the good. action, man. His so this movement. Was, this was the first stuff that I saw from him. I think Carlos Deanda, in fact, actually had shared um on Instagram. Well, this like is like the stories. this is like the new stuff, right? The do a power yeah, bomb. I had. I had never seen his work before this wrestling stuff. Oh, I would okay. Play. His sense of action and movement is superb. I mean, you really get the punch, you know, the the flying. Oh, the, wow. I mean, he, he does a great job with it. And the, the angle of those feet and her body is, is stretched just enough to really emphasize that movement. Yeah, it's so yeah, good. It's so great. <laughs> We're going to say that a lot. Oh, like yeah, this is the sticker. From I love his little book. sketchbooks. Yeah, he probably has so many of these. He's filled. He's he goes through them. He does little sketch crawl, uh, little sketchbook uh, tours, and he's got them all on a shelf uh, by date, by year, I guess. I'd love to yeah. get into that. Look at this pose. Yeah, that's great. I think that's really cool. Look at this, Kelsey. This looks like a Kelsey. I'm looking. <laughs> this looks like a Kelsey drawing. <laughs> I kind of, I could see you doing this for like Nora Saga. Yeah, yeah, this is fun. Good design on these bad guys. I love their helmets. And this feels a little like Paul Pope up here to me. I think this is the extremities thing, maybe, or a drawing from that era. Yeah, it could be. Hmm. I like this. The white out here too, just like. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Look at nice. this. Wow, and it's the Batman Adventures uh, uh Batmobile. Yeah, you got a good eye, dude. Damn, you picked that up. <laughs> yeah, this looks great. I mean, I love all that tech stuff. That's so fun. For an original art collector, this is a oh, grand man. slam. If you're a Batman fan, like this on your wall, you could be oh, really I would love it. Somebody's already got this. People scoop oh, this stuff sure. up quick. <laughs> Do you think this is, is this traditional color, Kelsey, or is this digital? 
Um, it looks it looks probably digital. Oh, okay. Uh, he might have done gray some grayscale on the car that's making it hard to see. Yeah, there's you screens I mean? up here on these these the lag tights too. Yeah. I mean, there's some texture to it. It does look like it could be, uh, but I'd say no. Some of the br the richness of those colors is hard to get. Yeah. Oh, man, look at that. That's crazy. I'm having trouble seeing what I'm looking at. Oh, I see. It's so a car got, being flipped up. Yeah. Yeah, and you've got... Um, oh, yeah, there's... It's like, yeah, cop car. It's up It's up on its hood, basically, like completely... Yeah. Man, that's that. awesome. So much energy. See, this is another kind of like uh, I would almost if I didn't see his like large brushy spots, uh, I would say this could be a Heron, James Heron. But right. like James Heron doesn't do nearly as much like wild dry brushing. Uh like he's heavier, heavier with his inking. I wonder uh, if they have like, if they have a friendship or a healthy competition. Or um, what their relationship is. I'd be curious guys. to know. I got to know James Heron just a little bit when he was just coming in the business. And uh -huh. a couple of us were like, oh, my God, this guy is going to go far. And he was struggling at first. And then he just catapulted into, yeah, you know, amazing stuff. He's one of those guys that just, like Daniel, just keeps working. Just yeah. cranking out series after series. Oh, look at the weird moray thing going on when you move. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so weird. <laughs> it's a lot. Of, I'll make you dizzy. No. <laughs> Psychedelic Sunday. Oh my god! Look how much screen tone is on this piece. He's got to be making his own. I mean, this. You're talking hundreds of dollars no, <laughs> per <I know>. piece. <laughs> It's like seriously, I was jo I kept joking when I did the other video. I was like, he's just showing off like how much screen Tony has. Yeah. See, I love that though. It looks like he just put the zip on and then the chains over the top are just straight white out just yeah. like paint splotches. Guy has got balls of steel. Yeah, I love it. Could you color over this stuff with the screen tone or would it create like some some printing problems? What oh, well, it just depends on the size you use, so yeah. Um, look at this shot, Kelsey. This is crazy. Brandon says James and Daniel are both represented by rep by Felix and hang out at cons and events. Yeah, I've been watching Felix uh art channel, uh, he's got some great stuff coming through there. Yeah. This is such good action, man. <laughs> it's, I mean, he just didn't skimp on anything. You've got a really, really clever perspective shot i mean it's like you really feel like you're sitting in the crowd and this well, guy's he mixes it up too like there's action where the background blurs completely where you're mm -hmm. you're doing like a long shutter where you know there's more blur and then this is like fast shutter speed where everything is crystal clear and you're capturing a moment mid yeah. happening yeah it's really fun uh Look at the ref. It's just like, like tripping on this dude. Like, oh my God. Where did this guy jump from? The upper balcony? <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and where is he going to land? Those, like, this is one of those pieces that makes you want to know, though. You're, this is yeah, great no, comic totally. booking. Uh, uh, like, where did he come from and where is he going? <laughs> Holy cow. This, this, this looks like a. Um, uh, oh, God, what's his name? I'm going to forget it. Uh, Mark Texera? Yeah, it's got like a Texera vibe. Yeah. Um, who's the... Uh, there's another artist that... Uh, he does more adult stuff now. But he kind oh, of... Oh, like... A, beach him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Wow. That's a it's violent. Yeah. All the zip is so crazy. He's like oh, painting that, that was, with zip. Well, this is what I was saying in the other video too, is like, imagine you go, hey, James, I'd like to get a commission. He goes, yeah, no problem. Like, what do you want? And you go, I want Wolverine and Sabretooth, you know? And he's like, okay, 300 bucks, come back in like two hours. And you come back and, and you get this. I mean, <laughs> every piece that he does is like, so like, it's so beyond what you would imagine. <laughs> yeah. that's. I mean, that's, that's kind of what you hope for is that, you know, you're not just going to get a headshot for, you know, $120. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to come back and get this. 
<laughs> like if you do Decker like in Blade Runner. And it's like, yeah, come back like in three. And you're like, oh my god. And then you get this, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. It's incredible. Mm. Yeah, this is this is a. Uh... Yeah, this is great. <laughs> it looks like he's got zip and gray tone <laughs> painting on it. You know, yeah, but is this like ink wash or or something like it? Looks like ink wash. Damn. Yeah, yeah, he you're is. right. Look at the look at the white media on that explosion. You could just see it. <laughs> oh my god! Just laid on thick. I love it. He is crazy. He's got it over here too, just to balance the piece out. <laughs> they should really like color his stuff in grayscale. Like, don't bleach it out, absolute black and white. Like, color it with the gray in it, right? Uh, because, like, you want to that the paint texture of that explosion uh -huh. helps create like a three dimensionality to it, right? You know, that'd be Look fun to that. just be able to see it. So I saw him do this on a on an episode of his show. Yes, yeah, this is the Queen Alien. It's crazy. Yeah, he did. He did this on one of his shows, and uh, you could like see it in are, progress. And it's like stuff. Pretty amazing. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Yes, it is. Yeah, probably a couple days for him. You think a piece like that? Uh, yeah, I'm, that I don't know. I mean, I, I, I would it think seems to bounce was, around. Right. I mean, I, I would think that it would take at least four or five hours to pencil and probably two yeah. days. He seems to like when he'll get tired of something and then he'll pull out another piece that he's halfway done with and start tinkering on that, you know, another, so he bounces yeah. around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I need like, to get some stickers on my sketchbooks. I love that. Yeah. That's a wrestling piece. Oh, this man. is tame for him. <laughs> <laughs> he's about to get those chairs. Yeah. He is so clever. Good storytelling. Yeah. This is what you want in a piece. I used to draw a piece after piece after piece of just a person standing, you know, like look at look at my cool guy. But it's right. like, no, no, the real game right now is what are you trying to say with your piece? And like this has something to say. That other piece is like, you know, you can look into it and infer a whole story with it. Well, this looks like it's the layout for what the other piece that we saw, unless this is a theme that he goes oh, with. Well, because remember the flipped up car? We've got the guy yeah. hanging out the window, and then he had more characters in the other piece, but it's it's pretty similar. Yeah, this is like uh, yeah, either before or after. This is more more of that car chase. <laughs> I, I what's well, like like if I did a piece like this, this is done. I wouldn't I wouldn't try to revisit yeah. it. I, I think like this is this is fine. Great. Oh yeah, it's it got the energy. It's got the storytelling. I mean, yeah, I, I love it. It's all there. Oh man, this is nuts. <laughs> That's so much energy. Someone. <laughs> That's great. Oh, I didn't even see his legs up here, but yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> what is that? A suplex? Uh probably. It looks or, like uh, it. Like DDT is when you like have the guy upside down <clears throat> bashing his head against the yeah. <laughs> Who's this character? You have any I don't idea? know. I was thinking of Ryan or somebody at first, but no, I don't know. Is it Mr. Miracle? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is Mr. Is Miracle, it? right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Dude, I don't know how I pulled that off. Yeah, no, you got it. I think that's... i look seen his symbol on his chest. I think that is. Oh, man. Oh, it's pretty this. rough. This uh, the guys in the speeder bike, yeah, just hanging out. <laughs> and the Ewoks are totally spying on them. They're thinking, got the best job in the galaxy right before the Ewoks kick their ass. Right? <laughs> yeah. the, ge the gestures, the poses of these guys are standing in are awesome. Yeah, he's got a real gift for like natural poses. Oh, yeah, Kill Bill. Oh, nice. Wow. <clears throat> the action. Oh, lettering. Man. That walk is great. I like how his O is in perspective and the K, like they're like leaning forward. Hmm. The F and W Weird. are kind of more are more flat, and then the O really like feels like it pulls like 
it's almost in perspective with the shot of the drawing. It's crazy. Beautiful. It's Kim Jung Ji. Man, man, Kim's short. Look how short he was. Maybe Daniel. I thought he was shot. way tall. Yeah, it could be. Daniel could be seven feet tall. <laughs> no, I, I've, I've stood near Kim. I don't. I don't remember him being short. I'd say he's like five ten, five eleven. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He always seemed like right. in his videos. He always seemed really tall for some reason. Oh, this is trippy. This is uh, like a ship. Good spaceship design. Yeah, it's nice, right? Yeah, really creative. Oh, here's another one. Mm -hmm. Neat. Yeah, that's another one he did on his show. This so looks like just that. doing little spaceship doodles. It reminds me of, um, oh gosh, Joe Johnston um, drawings from the oh, yeah. Star Wars sketchbook. <clears throat> I like this dry brush edges. It's nice. It's hard to, for me, it's like hard to control that. I'll either get too much ink or whatever. I, I need to work on my technique for getting good dry brush. I mean, the, just the amount of art that we've looked at right now is more than I draw in like two years. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Is this a private correspondence we're looking at there? <laughs> oh, it was on Instagram. He wouldn't post oh, it, okay. was it. This is cool. Vanish number two cover. Yeah, good stuff, man. <laughs> He's he'd been do using. He do a great crow. It's funny because Kelsey, this this will actually connect you and I slightly to Daniel. So the colorist that's been coloring him for the last couple of years is Mike Spicer, and Spicer is the guy that replaced you on New Superman. Oh, look at that! <laughs> it's weird, but yeah. So Mike Spicer has been coloring Daniel for a couple of years on quite a few books. Oh, good deal. Yeah, I thought Mike. I thought Mike was a good colorist. He seemed like a real nice guy too through the emails that I talked to him. Yeah, I like I like that artists are you know that are partnering up with colorists like they did with inkers, you know, because you find yeah. a good one, you kind of want to stick with them, create a look for yourself, you know. Beautiful lines on this drawing, man, it's great. Confident. Keep it fast. Keep it loose. Man, it's just good. So solid. This is like a little skadoodle, <clears throat> maybe a thumbnail idea or something to put down. Yeah, man, so good. So Some there he is. Is that him jamming out? <laughs> I, I think it was him at a show. This is cool. <laughs> yeah, blood. Okay, so we're gonna look at if. Oh, this is so good. Oh wow! This is a beta ray bill, like up to bat. <laughs> man, what a shot, right? Yeah, what a great shot. Do you think he uses reference for something like this, or do you think that he's able to pull this out of his head? Well, I think he uses reference just to get the details right, but I don't think he's referencing the shot or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I think he has it in his head, and then he's like, okay, what do these lights look like? And he'll pull right. out a picture of it, and, okay, they kind of look like this, and he'll just it's, doodle it out. Like, that is so good. You know, like Man. the sign, the Sitco, the McDonald's. I mean, that's something sure. he's pulling out of photo ref, but... You know, he's probably laying it in himself. Yeah, it's phenomenal. See, those are those little details you get from photo ref. It's like, oh, I never would have thought of putting a sit go sign right there, you know, yeah. or whatever. So, yeah, this reminded oh, me of Chain Gang great. more. Do you remember Chain Gang more? Yeah, it well, I was thinking it kind of reminded me of your dogs a little bit, you know. Oh, right, from yeah, Blaster it, Kid, these guys, yeah, in, yeah twisted yeah. up with the weird weapons, but yeah, fake gun. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah this is like a fahrenheit 451 image or something where they're burning all our books <laughs> yeah uh, oh it batmobile. says something in that oh, oh did it ah, right. 89 batmobile this is the best yeah you like that one the best that's my favorite batmobile yeah that's cool yeah classic it looks like batmobile it looks like a batmobile not like the new ones where it looks like robocop's car Right. <laughs> oh, here's a really cool. I think this is the piece Whoa. that Daniel or Dustin. I think this is Dustin's piece. The the person that did the super chat. I think that this is his. What a get! That's a great yeah. one. Yeah. Darth Vader whooping ass, man. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Vader head is so cool. Look at the the stretch on it. Yeah, he's got that movement. Oh, his sword's guy's... all like. I was wondering what was going on with his sword, but it's wide because of the light bending or whatever is going on right speed. i love 
I like this guy's legs just buckling underneath him. <laughs> His body's flying up. Yeah. Uh, oh, so he's got brutal. a progression. Like if you look at it in the terms of of it being animated, there was one oh, guy okay. at the top who was a you know yeah. So it was like three stages of the movement. Oh right, right, right. He's she's killing people with with a spinal cord and a and a skull. That's what she do. Who? <laughs> what character is this? Do you know who this is? This looks like the extremity uh, thing again. Oh, okay. Um, he could be just doing. You know, fans of extremities, maybe you know he's doing peace. I could be wrong. It could be that Wonder Woman thing he did. Also. Man, this this cape is like so crazy. Like I'd be so scared that it would be too um, catch your eye too much. But he breaks it up with the the snow or whatever. But um, man, that's a big shape to put for that much real estate. Okay, HR brings up a good point. The '60s Batmobile is pretty dope. Uh, you might have oh. to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Nice death. Ooh, piece. nice. Sandman. Not death, Sandman. Yeah, good Everyone. trees. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into some of his comic work now. Okay. We'll look at some comic stuff. So let me escape this really. So quick. this is his new book, Do a Power Bomb. What a name. Yeah, I'll open some of the, should we should we should we look Ooh. at that one first? I know there's some good stuff in here. Um well, some of these don't look, at... look like comic work. That looks like more pinup stuff. Look at that. Yeah, this was a jam piece. So Daniel and another artist did this. Daniel did the left side, and then another artist. James was, Heron. No, I was kidding. I, was, it, I don't think it was Heron, um, but uh, it really turned out great. And this is, um, uh, uh, what is the characters? It's um, well, it's from Evangelion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neon yeah. yeah, Genesis from Evangelion, yeah. Uh, we're getting oh. some uh, Nathan Fox's work is worth checking out. Nick okay. Dragota. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got some suggestions. Yeah, we always I mean, go back and read this stuff. So if you got any suggestions, pop them in the chat. We'll always yeah. need stuff to look at. One well, also for, for this that art. Is Buckalo. Yeah, it was. And there's the uh, Walter. Um yeah. uh remember you can Man, see all of this, this you can see all of this art on his um Instagram. So it's it's all there for um your viewing pleasure. You gotta send me this file of all your stuff. I want all these. Like I said, I just I go to Instagram and then um just write like you have. I usually will scroll down to the oldest post and then you just right click save page as and it'll save maybe about eighty images and then you scroll up about eighty images worth of images and then save again. It's a little tedious. Mm. But I mean, oh, sorry, I'm going to comics. So should we do Beta Ray Bill, do a power bomb, Extremity, or Murder Falcon? I have a little bit of each book. Man, I um should we go should we do Extremity from 2017 and move forward? All right. Let's look at that. Because I, I I have one extremity book, and that's we'll the only I've at, seen. So we'll look at a little bit of extremity. And... Yeah, I'm really wanting to see more of uh the murder falcon. Um sure. I'm not a huge wrestling fan, so just do a power bomb. It's fun, but uh, I like the Motor Falcon one because it's like a eagle head guy playing rock right. and roll and driving around in a van. That's just right up my alley. <laughs> yeah. I know when you said it, I was like, "Oh, ooh, that sounds like a good book." He's clearly like a guitar guy. Like he's got he draws really good guitars, and yeah. um, on top of it, um, uh, is like brand accurate too. So, mm. so this is beautiful. See, really. This is a while ago too. Great stuff. Yeah, 2017. A little bit of a different inking style. You know, it's it's you can see it's a little more, I don't know, fussy would be the right thing, but a little like, more controlled. Yeah. He's he's kind of trying to do what what other people do. I don't see that as much in his work now. Hmm. Like you like like the expectations of drawing a comic book. It's funny, he uses this cipher occasionally. He'll put an X on things. I always avoid X shapes just because it looks like uh, an X. But I've seen that. Oh, a few yeah. I'll do stuff like that, but I'll always add a little highlight on one of the lines so it yeah. looks like it's going over. You know. I do the same thing. That's so funny. Yeah. Look, he's got another X right here. It's a weird It's a weird anomaly that I catch, but like, do you see there's one right here? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> It's a weird thing to, because I, I'm always looking for them for black, you know, like to fill it in with black. So it's like I can't get that out of my head when I see him. His lettering is great. 
Oh, it is great. Uh, Daniel Earls Earls was wanting to know if we had any uh, Star Wars in there. We we looked at a, a little bit. Yeah, did he do an actual Star Wars story though? Uh, that I don't know. He's got a lot of Star oh, Wars good. commissions. There's a lot yeah. of Star Wars commissions. Definitely something that people are into. Maybe he did covers for Star Wars. I'm only guessing, mm. but um, he's using a thinner line with this stuff for yeah. sure. Again, it uh, it feels Mark's... a little bit more like he's. Uh, there's another X. Um, it, it feels like yeah. um. It feels like he's trying to do comics here. It's it's less Daniel, more um, the expectations. Yeah. yeah you know what's good. interesting is um, the original inker of Joe Matarero on Battle Chasers saw my video on Battle Chasers, and I had po I had pointed McQueenie? something out. I I'm forgetting his name right now. The guy that did the 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 preview book. Not not. Oh. McQueenie. It was the. Uh, Jason... Vince Russell. Oh, Vince, Vince Russell. Russell. Oh, yeah, I think Vince, okay. Vince started the book. Um, and and I had pointed something out, and he was like, "Man, he's like, you've got a good eye." He goes, "I can't believe that you were able to reverse engineer by the colored book like what I had done." But did you spot you know, an X? Is that what? No, <laughs> what, what, what did you... X. It was. It was. I. I think I. I. I had the feeling that one of the pages was inked over a blue line based on the way that it looked, ah. and um, I was right, but. You know, we've looked at millions of comic book pages at this point. So okay, they're saying in the in the chat that he had a bootleg old man Skywalker comic. Oh, okay. Oh man, Interesting. that sounds great. Yeah, it does. <laughs> now when yeah, they say bootleg, when they say bootleg, what does that mean? Like he did it on his Future. own? Or yeah, he probably just did it as an ash can. Uh, I think somebody else said he did it as an ash can and sold it just at a con, you know, probably oh, limited. Right, right, right. Which is oh, great. Right. I really wish they would do a dojenshi kind of thing. In Japan, they they, they let you publish uh, limited runs of fan made books, like uh, you know right. Batman or whatever. Wow. But you know, ah, this is great. I love. Yeah, this I think that that would uh, really encourage more fan interaction with these properties if they would allow a certain level of that you know like even just letting us do prints of batman at a con you know it's like i'm yeah. only going to sell it at a con you know well the other thing too is that like someone like daniel warren johnson does a fan-made comic book uh yeah. you know you pick it up and publish it you know and make some money on it that way yeah too. right no but kidding like, right? you collect collect you know like five of them you know and, and that could even be bait for people to do great work on them you know let's do star wars elseworlds gonna be fun <laughs> right. well it makes me think of legends of the dark knight and how great that title was for batman because uh, they were all so it. different that was my favorite batman book for well, years that was like one i would pick up regularly just to see what other people would what, do with it you never knew what to expect right oh my god there was always something amazing going on yeah yeah great series i almost got in on that man i really really wish my book had come out <laughs> Yeah, you had one like in the, the, like you were already working on it, right? Yeah, it was after 9-11, and it actually dealt with that with that kind of subject, which wasn't my favorite, but at least I would have had a, you know, Who wrote support. the story? Did you write it? No, it was been written by, um, and I'm forgetting his name now, but he wrote uh, movies like uh, The Tooth Fairy, mm. uh, <laughs> some, some uh, fun uh, bad horror movies. <laughs> right, right. That's cool. He's still out there, real nice guy. Uh, I it'd be fun to do some stuff um, uh, with him. Oh, so I, I never got a chance to do that. Do, let's do some Beta Ray Bill. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I haven't seen any of this. Just a little ad piece here and there. Oh, yeah, this will be fun. Can't go wrong with some Beta Ray Bill. My eyes are itching, man. Your eyes itching. All this, all these amazing artworks making my eyes oh, itch. Right. <laughs> That'll do it. Okay, grab some nice spreads too. So there should be some good shit in here. Man, this guy is such a badass. Good I think coloring, Jack uh, this too. I like it. Uh, it's the same guy. This could be Spicer, but it could also be Sonia Obak. This I I don't recognize the colors. Let's see. Hold on. I'll uh, file. Okay. It's got to be hard to like. He's got so much going on in a page. You really have Mike to Spicer. like. Uh, Mike Spicer is the colorist. Yeah, you really have to isolate his his uh you know figures and stuff all right so let's go on full screen mode. see I mean, I really that's think great because it's go ahead oh i was gonna say i really think jack kirby would like this guy's stuff 
Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think he would. Do I think he would love. I think he would love this. It'd be interesting. I know Toth would hate it, but Kirby would love it. <laughs> Is why would Toth hate it? Because it's too detailed. It's too messy. Like I'm pretty sure he'd oh. be like, pick a line and stay in your lane. <laughs> yeah. I draw super tight sometimes, and I still like messy stuff. Gotta like it all. I tell yeah, he was just very out. specific. He might like a lettering usage because he he loved lettering, and uh, he does have great lettering placement. Look at that. Ooh, spooky. Man, that's money right there. Man, he draws a squat, uh, sturdy Beta Ray Bill. I know. His 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 uh, hips Thick. and waist are so low. Yeah. <laughs> this creature is creepy. Oh, look at this. Mm. This feels this feels like old school comics. Like like if I mean it's a little more detailed, but but this this ha definitely has a vibe of like the Ron Lim era kind of like Silver Surfer to me. Well, to me, this also is very manga in that it's immediate. I think a lot of times where you know even manga artists are like, uh, I'm going to draw it the Japanese way, and you're like, why? What is the difference? Well, you see that that line. It's just the line that his pen puts down. It's not crafted into a particular right. shape the way we do. So I think that they, what they mean is that it's fast and immediate and from off the cuff and not labored over in that way. And I think that his stuff is very manga in that way. That is so cool. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, good stuff. What a page. Dude, this is bad. You just like all that gothic cathedral stuff. <laughs> I like the sense of space that it has. The buildings, yeah. the buildings are actually kind of my least favorite part. I like the sword and the rocks here, and I like this, and I like just the the, the like epicness of it. But the buildings are kind of they're crooked. Like they're, I dig the uh, dry brush fire at the base of the building. Look at that; it's just dry yeah. brush, but yeah, this stuff. looks like fire. I mean, it looks yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, the buildings are a little crooked for for um, me. Just hey, Skip, bit. Skip Edwards in the house. Hi, Skip. What is up? He actually Skip has got a um, Andrew Johnson variant cover. Ooh, nice. Oh, I love I love shots like this where you put a character in a space, you know, yeah. and it's cramped. And I don't know, I just love that where it really <laughs> looks like he's in there. Look at all the detail in this door. This is like really cool. Yeah, it's just him on the phone with like you yeah. know <laughs> doodling away. <laughs> I like all these I like all the boxes of like I don't know if they're like VHS tapes or like yeah. you know, like, like two inch tape. It's probably the Metallica yeah. black album drum film. <laughs> it's in there somewhere, yeah. All of Lars um <laughs> snare hits. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, good. He'll laugh if he sees that because he's a music nerd. Oh, look at this spread. Hmm. Dude, that is crazy. Gosh, man. I don't even know what I, I'm looking I, at. Oh, it's a hand. There's a hand squashing ships. This is one of those things where you get this as a colorist and you're like, what do, where do I go? Where do I start? <laughs> would you flat yeah, this or do you just go in and color over it? You'd have to flat it just to see where all the shapes are. And it's like, and then, and then at that the point... Boat? Send this to the Philippines or to China and have it flatted by someone else. <laughs> yeah, Mexico is where I go. Got my guys right. in Mexico. Yeah. Now I do my own flatting generally. So like that flatting to me is the way to understand a piece. Right. I, I hate flatting terribly because it's it's boring and tedious and meticulous. But you get to know that art on a molecular level at that point because you're right. intricately cutting out all these shapes. And uh, oh. that's typically where I learn about a piece. This is so different than the stuff he was doing in 2017. In four years, it's do you heavy. see how the, those, those fine lines are just completely gone from his work? Yeah. This is what yeah, I was it's real trying. heavy with black. Yeah. Well, and I liked what you said about it's the pen making the mark, not him making a mark that's expected from him. Right. This yeah, is... he's letting the tool do the heavy lifting. Yeah, it's really different. We're I so like it. I'm trying to get more into that headspace where, you know, it's it's more from the line. It's a lot like when, you know, I, I stopped doing 
detailed pencils and then light boxing it and then doing all uh, this because i'm like each step totally takes it down a notch so in a way right. this is kind of similar where you're just letting the pen make its mark it's more immediate Man, i do a lot of problem cool. solving in inks but it's you're drawing yeah. in ink. but but uh it's scary you know i i worked yesterday i was really anxious for probably five hours because i was doing hard stuff that i was i was scared i was gonna mess up you know honestly and you know. it's just going to get faster and faster because you're, you know, the more you do, you know, you, you start developing that hand memory and then it'll just be like, you'll be solving whole different problems. Yeah. When I'm, and I'm, I, I'm knowing my style more too, where like I'll do yeah. stuff, with a pencil, and then I'll go, oh yeah, I don't like that anymore. And I just take it out. You know, that was, that like was the border, the border treatment here. With I do stars. Too. I think that's really cool. Yeah. It's really neat. Right. Yeah. It really isolates the page really well. <laughs> I've never it? seen that. I don't think I've ever seen that done. I've never seen that done. I like it a lot, actually. <laughs> I do too. I'm like, oh, yoinks, putting that in the rich. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. I'm gonna take this trick. <laughs> I, I like it's like you and I both agree. I've never seen this done. Mm -mm. It's so simple. Just doing the border black with stars. I mean, that's it's great. And then He's that white, heavy white border. Yeah. And, and and the fact that it wasn't ruled too made it look really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Kelsey, Kelsey's, writing, Kelsey's writing it down in his journal. I, I am. <laughs> I'm. I'm taking notes of my uh, what kind of theft I'm going to be doing from Daniel Warren Johnson. Again, he loved the X. <laughs> the X's. All of his X's live in Texas, <laughs> which is where Shank takes place. Yeah, West Texas. Speaking yeah, of that, cool. um, all this stuff. Uh, pre the pre-launch for Blaster Kit is up. I didn't promote it early in the video, but um, when I finish this piece, I'm going to do another video and we'll look at the art and stuff like that. But yeah, please, please, please go and sign up for the Blaster Kid pre-launch. It's doing great right now, but if you're not on it yet, look in the description the link? box. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's going to be exciting times because I'm getting my website uh, fixed up. And I'm going to be probably showing that off in the next week or two where you can buy, uh, you know, maybe a hat or a shirt or, or, you know, I'm going to put some original art on there and just all in preparation of, of launching uh, my book in uh, April, May time period. So uh, it's going to be cool. Yeah, there's going to be a lot more stuff, a lot of good stuff coming down the pipe in the next few weeks and months. You should be able to this get this. I'm going to, I'm going to see how much of a nerd you are. Do you know this character's name? Fing Fang Foom. Yeah, it's the greatest. It's the greatest like comic. <laughs> I know a lot of the weird ones. Uh, yeah, I do too. That's like like you can show me like a popular Marvel character, and I'll be like, I have no idea what that character. No, name is. <laughs> but that's such a wild drawing of him too. It'd be easy to miss. Like, what? Is, okay, I don't know. What is this guy? <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. That's why I said I think Kirby would like the wildness of look at this. <laughs> Jasper was saying, buy your domain domain name, Kelsey. I was thinking about, because everything, uh, I'm on Comic Kelsey on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. You can just do Comic Kelsey. So I, I want to try to get that uh, domain as well. So don't buy it. Uh, let yeah, me go should, get it. <laughs> Blaster <laughs> Kid is owned by someone. Oh, I really? I keep waiting to see if they're going to get rid of it. But yeah, someone bought it like pretty well like a long time ago kind of it's weird too because like like i said my story on the blaster kid name was uh was at a time when google would actually tell you how many matches exactly mm. you have for a certain search there were zero matches for blaster kid when i created it so i don't know how they got the url because it, i think it, as soon as you type it into a search like a machine automatically too. gets it yeah I, I i believe that kelsey and honestly like when i get good names i won't search for them until yeah, I'm gonna i don't either because because i search I, them in google but not in the in the website thing no you don't want to search it no i don't well i think the websites do that too but yeah i i i think that um i really believe that that's what happened if you I search think, it you have to buy it like right then because yeah yeah i think any time yeah <laughs> it's, it's okay, google I I could just have Black Blaster Kid comic. It's not a big deal, but still yeah, that's a That's a hell of a look at just oh wow. Okay. <laughs> and he switched on me. And I, and this is, I, hold on, I can grab it. No, 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 don't please God no. Nope. I, my, okay. Oh my god. I didn't I didn't <laughs> 
Look at this is brilliant. That tree is nuts. This reminds me of in um, the um, Pepe Larraz um, book that he was doing from Marvel. There was this big yeah. tree of life kind of thing going on on a lot of the pages. It looks like he did his own lettering on this. Some Soldiers of Asgard. That looks yeah, like his. Does, right? I wonder yeah. if they created a font around his. Uh, no, that looks like his handwriting. Maybe he just drew it in and they're just like, nah, we'll just keep that. Yeah, it looks great. Or, Maybe he lettered this because that other one looks like I'll do my best. I mean, it looks like his too. It doesn't but look that, Marvel, yeah, but it looks like a font. I mean, like like he may have made his own font. Hmm. It definitely ain't Marvel though. That's really weird to to. You know, they're pretty specific about their lettering. This all looks like his. It's different. Yeah. Hmm. When you Daniel Warren Johnson, you get shit done. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, in a nutshell, that is what it is. If you can, if you can prove yourself to get shit done and to sell, uh, you could pretty much do whatever you want at that point. Yeah, as long as you're I, making money for him. Yeah, would you want to lose this guy to some other company or to, to go freelance or you know, like create our own? No, you know, better. Have yeah, they money. should do more, you know, for these guys. But yeah, because he will go his own way. He's proven that he does does it all the time. Go do one for the man, one for himself. He's like Johnny Depp of comics. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one Pirates of the Caribbean movie or Caribbean, and then uh, someone else. Look, here's another one of these um, space yeah. things. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, he's got the number on there so big, too. That's weird. Oh, it's you know, it's interesting. I wonder if um, he met Walter Simonson while he was working on uh, this. Oh, yeah, maybe. That's funny. I never put that together. Okay, so now we should go to which book next, Mr. Shannon? Should we go to uh, Murder Falcon? Yeah, I want to see some Murder Falcon. Okay, Murder Falcon it is. Because I haven't seen a lot of this. I haven't seen a lot of any of this. This is all pretty fun. I've only seen bits and pieces here and is there. Is it so. super fun? <laughs> it is super fun. It is. It's inspiring. It's actually making me kind of twitch a little bit. Like I really want to. <laughs> I really want to sling some ink looking at this. You know what's funny is when I was a teenager, I would go to my friend's house and we would we the plan would be like we were gonna sit around and like listen to music. So we'd get stoned and then put on like Metallica or something like that. I could I'm hang for like twenty minutes and I would want to go home and play guitar. So I'd always oh. end up I would always end up bailing because I would get so inspired by the music that I would be like, <laughs> Oh, I'm out, I gotta go home and I would go home and practice. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, I always had trouble. Like I would do the same thing, but different. Like I'd just end up talking, you know, oh, like right. in a studio in space. I just end up on one of the guys' couches, like in their room while right. they're working, and I'm just chatting. What's going on? <laughs> That's weird. Some of these files are like bunk. Oh, something. sorry, a bunch hmm. are opening, but there's some that aren't. I don't know what it is. Oh, weird. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Honestly. It's That's like there's all these new file formats coming out, like W yeah. WIP or whatever. Oh, Wim, web, WinMap web, or WebP. Yeah, those are a pain in the ass. That's like all almost all Google image searches are that way now. That's why oh, I always recommend okay. Yandex. Yandex. Oh, okay, Yandex. All right. Yeah, the Russian Google. <laughs> so this looks a lot more open. Uh, this is like a mix of like the Beta Ray Bill stuff. It and is. The old stuff. Yeah. I was, I was literally thinking the same thing. Here we go, Kelsey. You ready? Holy mackerel. It's going to be yeah. super fun. Look at the guy's. I don't know. It, he's holding an ace of spades. Is it Lemmy? Oh, it's Lemmy. It's oh, Lemmy. nice. <laughs> what is this story? No I'm going to have to read this. This is all music based, I guess. Oh, my God. It's a shrine to Lemmy in this castle. That is hysterical. There's like a snake <laughs> at the top. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. I thought it was a guy with an afro, and I was like, wow, it's like a guy with an afro holding up. <laughs> I didn't realize it was his hat. I didn't see the top of it. That is so badass. <laughs> what a great shot, too. I love the wood doors. And he's got that sp splattery brush. Like, do you see? Yeah. It makes the wood grain. Yeah. yeah it's best wood grains. Good dry brush. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. Oh my god, that's like great. that rock wall. That's insane. This guy is crazy. I like the more open look mixed with the shadow. Like I, I like this style a lot. 
Yeah. Uh, it feels very like it moves and uh, you can clearly see everything. Yeah. I like it. And the colorist oh, is my... doing a good job, like separating the smoke, you know, turning that into another color. Right. Uh, adds a little yeah, depth. Oh, knocking it out. Yeah. It looks yeah. good. Well, and, and, and what's nice about it too is you can still see his line work in the knockout. It's not like blurred. Yeah. Like that. So it's like, you know, any. To me, that's real important. Like as a colorist, is like, don't overpower the art accent the art you know so like some people paint over art too much yeah it's like well it just depends on what you're doing but oh, i love this i love the great creature yeah he is that armor i love this page this is a great page I'll buy it for you with blaster kid money <laughs> yeah please do <laughs> i love so this we'll have, we'll armor. get kelsey uh daniel warren johnson original page. he looks like samurai iron man yeah, I could see that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he's got he's got interesting like the boots and stuff like that. There's little there's little technological flares. This is a nice figure right here. This character standing here. I like this a lot. Oh yeah. Uh, Michael, Michael Mo says there's a great short he did in a Deadpool black, white, and red anthology. Oh look, that up. look at this. This guy's microphone mm. is crazy. It's like a dragon mic. Well, I guess it get, yeah, amplifies his voice. God, this is insane. Look at the bridge coming apart because of the sonic awesomeness. His stuff makes me want to make sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. That's how you know you've got you're looking at good comic art as you start yeah. you start making your own sound effects with everything. Scream. Could, yeah, like <laughs> blows the bridge apart. I like he's got like the power of the wolf behind him. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, look at oh, this. Good stuff. Whose mm -hmm. drum kit is this? This looks like Queensryche's drum set with that big arm. <laughs> it's probably somebody. Yeah. I wonder how many wow. how many uh, music tidbits are in here. Oh, I'm sure. Is that Dio? Who's no, that? this looks like this looks like um like I can't think of his name, like the one of the guys from like one of the death metal bands a little bit. Because he's got he's got the the death metal makeup. Yeah. On. I forgot what they call it. Death mask or something. That's fun. Oh, he also did a Superman red and blue or whatever it was called. <laughs> Future says red, white, and blue. Look at this. Oh, Deathlock. Oh, yeah, I did a Deathlock. Deathlock. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's got the flying V, Gibson flying V, or it could be a Jackson ESP. Uh, See, I love this because like Hollywood would not spend the millions and millions and millions of dollars to make this into a movie because it doesn't it's not like a tie-in anything it's about music right. you'd have to license all this music so this is a comic book that really almost truly can only exist as a comic book and i love that it's hysterical the hammer and the anvil <laughs> it's great great this design so awesome very creative that's hysterical when Kelsey told me about this book, it was funny because he goes, it's a guy with an eagle head driving around in a van. <laughs> and I was yeah, like, like Scooby-Doo, but with an eagle head guy. And they play music <laughs> like a band. I was like, I was like, sign me up. That sounds great. I know. I, I actually want to read this, seeing more of this. I'm like, what is that anvil all about? I want to know. <laughs> Why was Lemmy had a statue in a little castle? There I was an old metal song called Between the Hammer and the Anvil. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. So I, I, I don't know if it's a reference to that, but that's what it's making me think of. Oh shit! What is this? Hmm. Wow. What that? Who's that now? I don't know. This is like the gang. I think this is the gang of like. The no, kids. I mean the statue up there. I was first. The guitar is weird. That's a. Um, it looks like an urchin, which is a Aria Pro. It probably isn't, but it's, it could be a BC. Uh, it's not a BC Rich. Body. Daniel Warren Johnson's in here. He says it absolutely is a reference. <laughs> is he here? Hey, bud. Yeah, it is looks like here? it, unless that's somebody playing him. <laughs> wait, what does he say? It's a reference. Is it a reference? Wait, what does he rep? When... <laughs> now I'm tripping. Is it a rep? Are we talking about the hammer and the anvil? Or are we talking about who? what guitar is this? Is this an urchin? <laughs> Rich's head's going to explode. <laughs> I know. I'm like, Tripping, Daniel, you are awesome. Do you want to come on? <laughs> BC Rich. It's a, oh, it's a BC Rich. Is it a, is it, it's not a warlock. Is it a bitch? I can't think of a, Daniel, do you want to come on? <laughs> That's a BC Rich. Thanks, bro. <laughs> See if he wants to, does he want to come on? 
let's talk oh, about well, his we'll art. Save. Wow, Can't the in-laws are over, but thanks for the invite. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no worries. Dude, your work is insane. It's so beautiful. Great stuff, man. Makes me want to draw. And that's like a big, it's the biggest compliment I can give. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I know. Me too. What well, makes me want to draw better? <laughs> draw and draw yeah, this better. Is nice. This is great. Yeah, this is why I really wanted to see this book because I haven't seen that much. And like, this is everything in this is making me want to know why this is right. like, what's going on with this bull run here? <laughs> like, I want to know what's up with this. I like this, this guy. He's got like a wood, like a piece of, oh, it's a cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> he's got an ease. He got cowboy on there. Yeah. <laughs> More cowbell. He's, 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 he's summoning, he's like, he's either fighting or summoning with the cowbell. It should have been the Will Ferrell uh, character from freaking <laughs> Daniel saying that cemetery scene is a uh, referencing Chuck Schuld Schuldener oh, from yeah. the, the band Death. I'm a huge Chuck fan. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know this yeah. stuff. You guys I are music nerds, like beyond the level I am. So <laughs> that's Chuck's guitar. That's right. That is that's Chuck's guitar. He had, he had a custom. Uh, I almost bought one. There, it's a black. It's a black guitar. It's really nice, actually. I wanted to get one of those. Boom. Yeah. Well, how exciting, it's Daniel! Tough, thank you so much for popping into the chat. We really appreciate it. You know, now we try not to be self conscious now. So <laughs> uh, I'm fine. I I kind of assume if someone's alive, they'll probably watch the videos that we do at some point because you know, like. Although I will say I never did watch the KFAB video where they did steampunk. <laughs> oh I, yeah, you should. I feel, it's too, right. I feel too weird. It'd be. Weird. It might be cringy for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this guy I, with I, the. I don't know what's going on with this lobster guy, but he's great. Yeah, I like the eagle with the headband. This book is right up my alley. I mean, this is the I kind know. of like if I could make any comic in the world, it'd be something like this, where it just seems. Well, maybe not the music stuff because I don't know about music, but just the f fun of it. You know, it's so out there with its ideas. Your ideas are pretty wild, honestly. Like, but I, I think like don't ever self edit though. You know, I like the shoes yeah. he's got on. I used to wear those as a kid. These slip on. I was calling boat shoes. I don't know what they are. Like, like <laughs> Dana says, don't hold back. You guys can burn me down. It's all good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I believe me, we would if it would, but I mean, we're kind of like no, no we we speechless with some of this stuff. It's pretty amazing. But well, when, like, I, um, when I see. when I went through his Instagram, I saw all kinds of like accurate guitar drawings, so I knew he was definitely a music guy, big time. I think what I respond to most, other than like the immediacy of like how fast he draws it and it's straight out of his gut, is just his sense of movement. Um, yeah, it's really what gets me most. Yeah, this is like a panel heavy page, too. But probably 10 panels three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. It's a lot. Yeah, that's no know? joke. It never feels, it never feels scrunched, overly scrunched in. I'm curious about this lettering, too. All this lettering in your stuff looks like it's like you did it by hand, but Rich is spelling some, uh, some, uh, program, uh, I don't know what well, you call it. Lettering font. You can you can create a font based on your handwriting, like it is possible. Hey, Daniel, is that a pain? Like, I want is to do that. the bird is the bird a reference to the Ernie Ball bird? That was my first guitar book, where the Ernie Ball, um, how to play guitar, one and two books. But uh, it, it it probably isn't, but it could almost be a reference to the Ernie Ball, um, like mascot. <laughs> That's super nerdy, if it is. <laughs> no fear zero says i got a feeling next book will be some sci-fi stuff robots and spaceships no uh, what are you talking about for daniel i mean i would love to see some robots and spaceships yeah i love all these little spaceship drawings let's check out the guitar how loose that is see that I makes <laughs> like it's i was crazy. saying before i don't know if he was around when uh when i said this but it's like your work i feel like your work gives me permission to kind of loosen up a little bit i feel like i'm uptight That's rich so is good. real uptight but it works for him I, it's working <laughs> great. i get loose in spots though if you actually really look at it it's it's kind of messy but it's just the overall the overall vibe of it doesn't look messy yeah no no man it, this is so fun <laughs> the murder 
the falcon head guy i keep saying eagle head but his name is falcon head, or falcon eagle or what, wait what's the name murder falcon oh, murder <laughs> falcon <laughs> eagle yeah, man. Nice. tell mike spicer that i said hello mm -hmm. daniel if you're still here mike uh, mike colored my work for about two years over at dc really nice guy yeah after he replaced me i got rid of that deadbeat got mike spice in there to take care of things <laughs> well mike mike and, I, mike and i both like victor was very high maintenance i mean mike mike actually yeah. handled it well but uh yeah i mean Vic, victor was very particular never an so am i it. that's why we headbutted yeah. yeah you need a guy in there to kind of take direction i guess and mike's very pro went straight in there yeah. and took care of things and look at this i love the the steering wheel action oh yeah yeah <laughs> What's well, interesting too is he dropped out the background was smart you know like there's not um you know all the like seats and back windows or whatever i nice want one. that van so bad only i need I like, a, like a faux rosetta airbrush painting on the side though <laughs> this is like the classic like the just the stripe van it's uh yeah. he, does, he does good torque on the wheels too like in his cars like when the, the body of the car shifts um like sort of with the the wheel carriages don't move with it completely i'm wondering so how you do that with a motorcycle because i'm i'm getting ready to do a bunch of motorcycle stuff and i want to have this kind of movement and it's like well when you got the four wheels you can do this sense of like inertia and weight to the carriage right but if you only got the two and it generally will you tilt into the to the move it's like you need the background to go with it you need the like how do you create that what do you call it the weight of it on a motorcycle, I don't know. I mean, you, if Daniel, you want, do a quick look with motorcycles so I know what to do. <laughs> I love this. This is great with the like the blaster jets on the bottom of this, like his drum riser is like flying yeah, off. Man. Beautiful. He must have been laughing a lot when he was making this stuff up. Like it's, it's really. <laughs> fun. I like that he's a fan of death. Chuck Chuck uh, died of cancer, sadly, but man, they're such a great band. That it's funny oh, I thought you meant just in general a fan of death. I was like, <laughs> no, no, the band death. Oh, okay, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I did I did a bunch of death metal album covers for a while and uh, got really into all that stuff. Just um, it's kind of background music for drawing it. I love all the ca the camera tilt too, and I I'm noticing just now when you showed that page, it was like it's very he he holds back until the moment of action, uh, and he really starts uh, tilting the angles and stuff. Uh, down angles too, man. I I'd like to pick up yeah. more of that. This great down angle stuff. I think those are great for comics actually. Yeah, like that. Not it's not completely down, but that's what like a three quarter -ish angle shot or something. Will Will Portasio would do that a lot, and it was that's where I where I went like, man, I need to do that because that's really really yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, him, Jim, uh, Rob Liefeld, a lot of those guys did this kind of like down angles. Um, they must be Such good. I really like this a lot. You still there, Kelsey? Yeah, yeah. I, I was reading okay. chat a little bit. Uh, looks like Daniel's hanging out with chat chatting. That's great love seeing uh, that that's really really cool daniel again thank you so much for for popping in it's like a huge honor i can send you a link to the patreon video that i did because i did about an hour and 15 minutes on you a few weeks ago for my patreon but i'll send it i'll send it to you you can watch me gush over your work for an hour uh, what's uh j ryan saying something about uh cayman writer i love cayman writer what's he saying Oh, go ahead. What's, Sorry, I'm talking to myself. Oh no, 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 no. I was, I was listening. When I'm in Photoshop, it's like I feel a little disconnected from the chat anyway because I can't see it. So, uh, yeah. Let's see. Man, Daniel talks a lot. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he doesn't warp in Photoshop. Okay, I was wondering that. He does it all uh, by hand. Uh, that definitely takes like a. Uh, little experience uh, experience messing with that so michael Hing. oh like uh like when he stretches um images yeah or does like the you know the uh, what do you call that like a the camera lens effect the wide angle kind of sure, sure. 
Yeah, you could do it with Michael um, Hing says uh, the best Delph album was Scream Bloody Gore. Yeah, that's good. You like that one? Michael hugs his music. Chuck was an animal lover. He was the sweetheart of a guy, but he played in one of the craziest bands ever. <laughs> hmm. Man. I was just noticing some like white out. Like, oh, you on can the tell page. Where oh. He's... Yeah, I'm, I'm just noticing like uh, one of the things I've been doing a lot lately is is like rendering a lot and then whiting it out. And then you leave uh, all these little nooks and cr these little knickknacks, these little uh, scraps uh, left behind. And I, I really like the energy they have. And I can kind of tell certain times where it's like the leftover from whiteout. This is pretty gritty right here. Like it's crazy. Like look at the line work on just this face, like how um how like dry brushy it is. It's interesting. I wonder if he's got paper with a tooth on it. Could be. Like, uh, give it a little bit oh, of that roughness. Him, ask him about the screen tone. Daniel, do you make oh. your own screen tones? We were curious oh, good about point. that. Someone yeah, somebody in the chat that. was saying that you made uh, your own screen tone, and I was curious about that. Do you get like a sticky paper and print it out? Like, how does that work? He's probably gone. <laughs> well, we you, missed okay. our chance, Rich. Well, and, and Daniel, I, I just bought about 60, well, no, it's probably like 70 to like 200 sheets of screen tone on eBay. And um, I was going to scan it. But if you have that process, I can send you the files if you want um, stuff that maybe you don't have. I'd be more than happy to share it with you. Oh, but, he's uh, saying he you know, buys like, them from Japan. Oh, okay, he does. Okay, so yeah, he gets uh, like okay. the, it's probably the same company. I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head, not Letcher I really but... want to mess with that. I want to, I want to have to look into that. It looks so fun. Yeah. Does does he use it for like um, I don't see it on these pages. Is it more of a for his commissions? I don't know. I, it could be I, in there, just real subtle. I maybe I used it, it more pages. now. Yeah, I had I didn't see it on these pages. Maybe I'm wrong. Rich has got to get you in here when the uh, in laws aren't in and pick your brain on some technique. Yeah, like, we've all, been meaning although, to have forever i like all the uh the zip i mean you don't see a lot of people using that but i'm I am seeing it more now than than I have been in a while so it's really fun seeing it make a comeback i think people are really scared to use it because in a digital space you can get that moray effect really easily and right. it must not work that same way uh with doing it by hand oh uh f0 and future landfill says deleter uh, deleter deleter, screen that's tones. The, that's the brand that I have the the, okay. the big cash of. Deleter. Those are like eight gonna, bucks a sheet. They're expensive. I'd say six to eight sounds about like what what uh, I'd seen at Comic Con. It was surprisingly expensive. I remember looking at it and going for one sheet. It's like I'd pay twenty for like three, maybe, but I mean it's basically the same price. I'm gonna get some, and I'm gonna have a tiny little uh, piece of zip on each piece, just like a little. <laughs> oh, no. Where's the zip? Find the zip in this piece. <laughs> there's a there's a panel on the page that I'm working on right now that I wanted to use, oh, um, the, like kind of gray gray to like darker gray. Um, I I may actually use a little screen tone on the one panel. So he does say commissions only. I guess it gets a little too tedious to do right. on pages. So right, I can see that. And you just bring you bring it to the con with you. This is cute. Oh, that I probably commissions like from home. I can imagine doing that at, at a convention. <laughs> That'd be crazy. So here, Kelsey, I'm going to give you some insider guitar nerd baseball. This is probably a Dean because Gibson actually created the Flying V. But but uh, Dean has a ripoff version of it that uh, Gibson sued them for recently. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if he's spot on on this. I'm sure you are. Yeah. How do you know? Like, what's the tell? Uh, the headstock is the. Uh, the that's what I, the, yes, what I was curious about. Yeah, the Gibson Flying V's got a different headstock. So I mean, they 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 had a line of guitars called I think Futura back in like the 50s. And there was, was like three, there was future. like three guitars. They had to explore. Uh, F, F fear zero, no fear zero says Dimebag played a Dean, right? Did we lose you there? Did we lose Rich? I think we lost Rich. <laughs> 
All right, Daniel was saying uh, that's so that's the one deleter five bucks for those. That's not, okay. That's not bad. Uh, I don't know. Eight bucks was seen in like. Oh yeah, you bring it with you to the convention. Okay, yeah, we lost Rich. It's just gonna be me. Dimebag Daryl guitar, and Miss Dimebag. Well, I wish we know what happened to Rich. I guess uh, we were coming up on two hours, but we still got some time left. Oh, now it's just officially me. Hello. <laughs> oh, he's going to restart. He'll be right back. All right. Well, this was a lot of fun uh, getting a look at some of this stuff. Um, I've been picking up with uh, Daniel Warren Johnson's work here and there uh, since uh, somebody was telling me about extremities. And uh, I immediately like took an interest, but then lately you know with his youtube channel and like uh picking up on on how he works it's been really inspiring to me because like i come from a school of uh animation guys um uh guys like stelfries and adam hughes and uh, they're much more controlled in their presentation and the way they lay down a line and it, it's it, it it takes so much time and energy and effort and it gets to the point where you're just trying to get it done because you're like, ah, oh, man, I just, I've spent already like three days on this thing. And uh, it's just not, it, it lacks the fun. And I think it ends up showing in the final product, you know? And I think that the way that guys like Daniel and James Heron and Paul Pope and, and all these guys, they're putting a much more uh, of an immediacy on it, like a stamp, it comes straight from the gut. You know, and it's like um, I used to always like my sketch work more than my finished product. And that's the whole reason I went digital uh, to begin with was because I, I, I taken out a step of printing it out and light boxing it and all that. And it's like, let me just go straight from my sketch to the final thing on, uh, uh, you know, in the computer or whatever. And that helped me a lot to the point where it's like now I'm wanting to get back to paper. I've been doing a lot of paper stuff and seeing, um, Rich says his computer's restarting. All right. Well, <laughs> but then, um, yeah. So going back to paper, seeing guys like Daniel out there, uh, doing just no fear, man, just, oh, this doesn't work. Uh, another guy I was telling Rich about is, um, let me see if I can open it up. I've already forgetting his name. Russian guy. Uh, we'll see. Richard friend, um, Nicholas Namiri, uh, this guy, I've been watching him on YouTube as well, where he, again, just no fear goes straight to ink a lot of times and then whew, just white out whole things that I think are good. I'm like, oh man, that was great. And he just whites it out, starts over crazy. Let me catch up with chat here real quick. Um, mm -mm. Uh, let's see, share some stuff. I can't share it with, uh, Rich has got to share stuff. I can't do it. Um, yeah, Daniel needs to come in here and help, but I, I can't even invite him if I don't, <laughs> I don't have access. Uh, let's see, Chuck, just to interject, Michael Hink says, just to interject, Chuck was briefly in Slaughter, not the hair metal band, <laughs> who were also great, raw, Celtic, frost style, death trash from thrash okay from canada uh, around the time of uh, necrophagia repulsion too hmm that's some deep cuts right there uh the pressure's rising now nah, i've been here before i've done it michael hing for some great horror comic style cover art uh impedigo i m p e t i g o impedigo even did a tribute to creepy comics with a song called Dear Uncle Creepy for lovers uh, of video nasties and horror comics. Sweet. Yeah, man, this is some deep cuts in music lore, man. Uh, let's see. Michael Hing says, also, Kelsey, I'm often preferring, I prefer my sketches too, uh, much more organic and free. And I think that that's where the style that uh, we're talking about comes into play where, and I, I think that's a very manga as well, is that it, it is more uh, immediate. You know, you're going straight from the sketch to the final product. 
in some cases it's, it's like the same process uh let's see what's the guy's name kelsey which one oh, i might have already answered uh kelsey what tools do you use when inking um uh, brush uh, lately i've been using what whatever i can find at the dollar store or at walmart just because i think that would be fun i often hear questions about tools and like what do i use what paper do i use and i'm like anything that you got near you you know you can draw on an envelope i mean uh, you look at what sinkevich had done with uh, electro assassin and he's got staples in that stuff yeah, Dana says Namiri is great. Yeah, th these guys have a boldness to their uh, work that, oh, man, it's just balls of steel. You know, there's no fear there. It's great. Hey, uh, there he is, Rich. Sorry about that. My computer crashed. I managed to vamp for a little bit. We... Yeah, no. <laughs> Last week when I had to start the show without you, I was like, oh, this is weird. Like, I need the feedback. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely easier to kind of come up with things to say. But that's where the chat comes in. Always rely on chat. Their chat's the best. Now, was I mistaken or did I see James Heron was in the comment section too? Oh, was he? No, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was Daniel. Um, so I have just a few more images open in Photoshop. Do you want to look at them real quick and then we can wrap it yeah. up? We yeah, let's do that. Well. Okay, so let me... Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. It was weird. Like my computer locked up and then it was just... Uh, it was gone. <laughs> oh, Ren says, inking is always my favorite part of the drawing. Uh, it's getting to be mine, too. I love it at the end of a piece where my hands are just covered in ink from splattering, from whatever, and pencil, too. And it's just, there's a there's a primal instinct that, that comes out so when I grabbed, you're drawing on paper that you don't get in digital. Yeah, no, for sure. Traditional is way more fun. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, digital is, I think digital is great for layout it's very it's, yeah you know it's it's a great tool for that so we'll, we'll look at a little bit of duo power bomb number one so we can promote his most recent book for sure so this is amazing stuff i mean the wrestling stuff was what what um carl stianda shared and i saw this and i was like who who in the world is doing this work this is insane yeah this is i wonder if this is if he's um because this, this is definitely some of the best wrestling action I've seen, but oh, I haven't yeah. seen a whole whole lot of wrestling comic books. But this has definitely got the energy level like dialed up to eleven. <laughs> this is someone that knows wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. There's not. A, it's not a guy like faking the funk. Look at this spread. See, this is he's doing what he was doing in, uh, in Murder Falcon, where it's it's not just wrestling. He's personifying, and I don't know if that's the word for it. You know, he's. So He's dialing it up to 11. You know, that's the only thing I can say. This is insane. Like, God, yeah, it's beautiful. So beautiful. And I love that ring is up here. Like, God, what a venue. Yeah, no kidding, right? That's good. This is incredible. <laughs> Again, this is the stuff that makes me want to read comics. Because if it was just a regular wrestling book, I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, no. This is like Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's making it fun. Oh, my God. That staircase is you got no budget. So I'm constantly preaching to these, uh, you know, people want to get into comics. I'm like, if you're going to have a conversation, you need to be dodging a missile while they're doing it. <laughs> it, does, it does have like a little bit of like a street street fighter kind of vibe, like where, um, yeah, I think this is a great idea for a comic book. All the um, the different wrestlers, um, you know, like this would be a great fighting game to have where you oh, fight sure. different wrestlers and stuff. Yeah, oh, for game. sure. I guess they have the WWE wrestling game mm. or WF or WWF. I can't think of what it's called. Um, yeah, but th but there was there was some wrestling games that were pretty popular back in the day. See what I was saying about about how this would be a very difficult movie to make to to get the millions and millions of dollars that you need to make this into a movie. I think you would have an easier time making a video game even though those are also millions of dollars and many years of work yeah i think this kind of material would play in a video game uh space a lot easier than it would in a filmmaking space at this point at times i get little hints of um jeff darrow and his work not not just the, mm. like, the detail but some of the some of the ways that he draws some things uh faces and little things it could be yeah sense, but um oh, man this is some cool Love them environments. Yeah. 
there's a lot of panels on this page again and we got one two three four five six seven eight ocho hmm. good stuff nice conversation scene <laughs> yeah. oh man this is great i see it's a co it's a co-ed uh, locker room yeah no, no, too. <laughs> the wrestlers they just have to go in and just do what they do <laughs> Man, so fun. I'm wondering, some of the faces look... I'm sure it could be an aspect of how he draws, but there's always... When I see your faces in here, I always feel like they're drawn from somebody you know that you know, because there's almost like a recognizable quality to some of Right. I think um, I've, I've spotted him in the crowd scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or at least what, what I believe to be him. Oh, Daniel says uh, those games suck. Old school wrestling games, where it's at. Yeah, yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, like the '90s, like '90s wrestling. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had, that, I, I had one of them for like the PlayStation. I can't think of the name of it right off the top of my head. Like PlayStation Two, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's how old I am. Man. PlayStation Two. Kids don't even know. They 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 don't know what ColecoVision is. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah i i grew up with every game system from the beginning <laughs> yeah right that's like atari 2600 was the shit i love this i love when they put a halo in coloring uh what's his name from wildstorm uh uh who am i thinking of alex uh, sinclair no 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 from uh joe chido chiodo oh. he would do this in like that you'd get that summertime color where you have this orange halo around the character oh right right yeah I just love the way that looks it seems to pop it out man the inks are so different on this than um was it extremity uh the the first yeah. book we looked at like like it's so man so bold that's some gray tone in there he's like uh yeah little screen tone there right or is it screen yeah okay i mean it could be digital it's possible well no i was thinking he had like a some you know gray tone like a oh, English, but oh, yeah oh, oh. where do you see it maybe and, not uh, well just because you look at the edges and they're like brushed on oh right but maybe uh that is a screen tone it's kind of hard to tell with the printing yeah uh tony harris does cool halos too uh parvin or uh, praven says yeah i love that look I think I've seen Adam Hughes do that a few times. He actually drew stars, like stars. I love it. <laughs> That's how you know it's space, Rich. It, what's funny is the color looks like it would glow in the dark, like because it's kind of that. Oh, it weird, does. That like um, that greenish, whitish, greenish. Yeah, yellow, green, whatever. See this guy. This guy's face is so specific. The older oh, guy. Different. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes me think of like even I know this guy. <laughs> yeah. It, it was like um Michael Lark did a book called Terminal City. Oh yeah, I love that book. Yeah, it, I don't know if it like my memory of it was that it was a little tiny bit like this. Well, he had he also had faces like that where it's like yeah. I feel like I feel like this is an actual person. <laughs> sure. Oh man, the colors on this are great and this is a great shot. Oh, Daniel said he actually used tones on that page. Yeah. Yeah. So he does do it sometimes. Okay, not all convention work. <laughs> we call it the screen tone flex. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Ah, oh, this shot. Look at that. That's the so ceiling. Cool. Scroll up a little bit so you can okay. see the the angle of the ceiling. Yeah. Oh, look, there's the stars. Dude, maybe that stuff did glow. Okay, yeah. Because I, <laughs> I have this stuff on my roof in my room. That's so yeah. funny. It's my daughter's <laughs> room now. But yeah, my, my room when I was like 18, I put all that stuff up there so I could have the party zone. <laughs> That's a hard shot to do, to be the, have the camera that close to the ceiling. Uh, but doing that, that curve perspective yeah, uh, really helps. Did he? Yeah, did you pull this one in like um, Photoshop or Clip Studio? Like the, like no, he says he doesn't. He does it by hand. So, oh, yeah. oh okay yeah i mean you could definitely just do kind of like a curved sort of skewed perspective on it it really looks great man this is awesome yeah that's a fun one i like the room filled with stuff that you can yeah. recognize too yeah yeah you can just kind of have fun and sort of geek out on all the like little things i like that your display case oh yeah the, check it out the trash can uh yeah. hoop 
<laughs> that's so funny god i used to like that was my thing i was i was so confident with my trash <laughs> oh, used to, like a teenager it's like off the wall in the trash can <laughs> i miss every shot if i'm trying i miss it but if i just like throw it over my shoulder i'll make it every time if i try i can't hit it it was funny. <laughs> this room is reminding me too of like when I was a teenager. Like, I, like if I cleaned my room, I had a spot for everything. So, like, like if this was like some object that I owned, like that would be its little spot. Not, not like an OCD way, but you know, it's like you'd have your remote control for your TV would sit right here, and the game controller would be here, whatever it was. It's so funny. Wow, Cullen uh, actually spotted something. He's the like complete opposite of Kelsey's favorite worms eye view. I do the worms eye view a lot. And I think that comes from my love of like uh, David Fincher movies, uh, but I'm, that's why I'm interested in this down angle because yeah. it, it seems like it works really well for comics in a strange way. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's fun. Oh, that's cool. Look yeah, good. <laughs> oh, look at this. This is great. <laughs> good teeth. I love. I love crooked, crazy looking teeth, man. Yeah size size varying and stuff if you try to draw them too accurately it like it turns into a handful it's almost better to have them like have them have i think them. the first time i saw that was uh uh in a in a piece of media was um uh the kid from uh, iron giant had crooked teeth oh right and i remember being like wow that's really uh it, it really has a neat effect you know you don't see that often I think that this is the pencil drawing that we looked at on the Instagram stuff. Oh, like, okay. Commented on with the really solid, like the gesture. I'm. It's very similar pose, but I think that this is the finished version of it. See, he's got I, a guy with things coming out of his head. Uh, there's something out there. I think there's uh, something in the air with uh, spikes coming out of heads. And uh... right. <laughs> dude, look how thick the line, the ink line, is on this. That's wild. Yeah, that is a thick, beefy line. His shoes, everything are so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the angles, the faces. Look at the faces. They're so yeah. simple and like the eyes and construction, but somehow they end up being more realistic. I get a little bit of an Atomo vibe occasionally in his work too. Yeah. Just to to bit. Toth was another guy that was really good at that, about doing these real simple faces, but they had like a... a a realism to him somehow. Yeah. Just, yeah. You said Toth wouldn't like this stuff, Kelsey. <laughs> I don't think he would. I really, yeah. I still hold to that. Toth is a hater. <laughs> he is a hater. <laughs> we love him for it anyway. You know? Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Dude, look at this shot, man. This guy is like so high up in the air. Holy shit. Yeah, that's great. Only bad things can come from this jump. Holy cow. Uh, Daniel's got to go. Thanks for hanging out, man. Yeah, that was a lot Daniel, of fun. thanks so much for popping in. That was really cool. We're almost done, but we'll we'll finish this book and then we'll um we'll wrap it up because I gotta get to drawing myself. Yeah, this is making me itch to get to the inks, man. Good. I may do that first thing. Remove all the digital crap and do some inking. Yeah, yeah. I I only use the digital to help me with layouts. You know, where like I'll I'll um. Mm -hmm my thumbnails like well i do my thumbnails in pencil and then i i tighten them up in uh, digitally it's it helps me because like you know you might have a good shot and then you want to scoot it over or you go like what would it look like bigger what would it look like smaller i know i second guess myself constantly and i i mean you have to be bold you know you kind of have to either either go ahead and erase it if you think you can do better or roll with it just yeah. do better on the next one i guess do better. Yeah, just yeah, do better. You know what, just though, tell yourself that you could do better than this. Do it better. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's funny because because I really I've I've gotten to the point where I'm able to let stuff go now and just it's like hmm. I go enough of this is really cool. The little anomalies that are bothering you are give it character. And you know, we've all said this. It's like sometimes when people get better and better at their craft, the stuff kind of loses a little bit of the. Um, character yeah. yeah so it's like like i kind of embrace the oddities now and just go huh you know i there's a oftentimes i'll fall in love with one particular uh, era of an artist's work where they've refined themselves from amateur status but they're not completely refined yet so there's still this rawness to their stuff 
and it's this happy medium and they that phase never lasts long but i'm seeing like guys like refine that like daniel like you yeah. know um paul pope you know uh, that kind of they keep that rawness in there I want to point out the cauliflower ear on this fighter. Well, Pope has gotten refined, but oh yeah, what a nice touch! Yeah, really, really good. It's very subtle, but it's like that's those guys' ears get destroyed. Cartilage just turns into mashed potatoes. Seneca says Control Z. Yeah, that's that undo. I remember the first time I started gun and going back to drawn by hand. And then you you just casually throw out a line and you go oh that's wrong and then you're oh no I gotta I have to fix it the old fashioned way <laughs> oh right <laughs> yeah but you get bold with it and then you start throwing down better lines the first time um, I sometimes will wait and fix mm. the error later like I'll go like this is gonna annoy the shit out of me for the next two hours but yeah. like let's finish more stuff on the piece then we'll come back and assess like how catastrophic this this one line that you're obsessing on really is mm -hmm. it helps you know what i mean so you don't bug out like every second yeah oh, that's a that's a fun shot yeah it's really good the roughness of the inks man i'm just in love with that it's incredible what he does it's so much like, energy yeah i mean if it was tight it wouldn't look as good you know like up here on the roof yeah yeah it's kind of like uh you know what if he was inked by mark farmer you know like what would that look like <laughs> it wouldn't be as cool, you know but yeah i don't know i don't think it would it would definitely be an interesting experiment to oh, see nice. see him inked by a, a really uh structured inker his it's, poses man the poses are really where it's at too yeah at some point you should definitely do your alice in wonderland book like painting in broad strokes but i those yeah. characters really wild but that would give you an opportunity to do something. it's related to shank so it's oh. that's actually another uh another story in that world i got a few different books that uh i was developing and it turned out that they were all connected so i was like oh well i'll just do all of these <laughs> i'll do them one at a time yeah oh, it's with black with blaster kid i've incorporated i rolled uh the great game into blaster kid the, oh, okay the, nice the early sequence with her great 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 grandfather um is the same time frame of um another book that i have so i was able to connect those two universes that's fun i mean i love when you're kind of making it up you're you're crafting your story and yeah. like there's a point where it kind of starts to live on its own and you yeah. have to follow those threads or yeah. not you know yeah. it's really fun yeah where it's like you're like ah shit i i want to do this but the story already dictates yeah that, like this is this is going on well i had this whole like opener i was working on with a snake on the road and then so, you know i was like yeah i'm gonna start my book off this way and then and then uh i it's some in, bit of inspiration like hit and i had this whole other idea that started even crazier you know and now seeing you know how the guy like daniel goes for broke with these ideas it's like man i i you know i need to up the ante and like yeah. really have fun with the the creative like no limitations you know see how far you can push it i can't believe he stopped in that is so that fun. was a lot of fun that was great i i hope that he enjoyed it and um you know i'm gonna i'm getting the link for uh the blaster kid you were you were gone i think when he was talking about the deleter zips were like five bucks actually oh he gets them for five a sheet yeah so i'm gonna look into that i i can i can definitely throw down five bucks a sheet you know that's not bad just to yeah. play with it you know try some things the link out to the blaster kid pre-launch i'm pretty sure that this is it um yeah and i'll have i'll have this page that i'm working on I'll have this done um, by uh, Tuesday. There's like, oh, see, this is the panel right here. Do you see all the gears and stuff behind this guy? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, the 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 bald guy. Um, yeah, that, right. That was where I wanted the screen tone. Is right. Oh yeah. Uh, on this 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 one right here. I wanted this to go from um, dark to light, uh, and so that this guy pops out more. And you're gonna etch out little white spots and stuff. Um. Oh, oh, on, the, on, the, on the zip yeah. yeah possibly i probably won't use screen tone on it honestly i'll leave it open for you to color but you can see yeah that. oh you should I, i'm all in favor of of uh using some zip so if you wanted to man go for broke if you want to okay. do uh grayscale on it 
I can I was, fly with that to too. Like a little bit of a Chris Boccolo vibe on these panels mm -hmm. with his like kind of creepy cartoony guys. He's really, yeah, he's really good at drawing this creepy guys, <laughs> creepy so, guys yeah. and cute girls. The art of Chris Boccolo. I've got about, <laughs> I have about 12 hours, I think, left on that page. <laughs> oh, wow. Holy smokes. But it's right on point with the other pages, though. That's the thing is, is, is I started it. Uh, like a day and a half late. I also, I, I not to complain about this, but I had pinched a nerve in my back and it was really hard oh. to work this week, but I'm, I'm fine now, but all right, good. Yeah. Like I have none of that. Oh, for like a day. It, it sucked too. Cause it was like, like my back hurt, but not really. It was kind of more lower. And then it was like my ass and like leg. <laughs> that sounds like sciatica. <laughs> sciatica. No, it does. Like, uh, seriously, I, I had a bout of that myself, and I had to. Uh, oh, that's when you know you're getting old when you have a bout of something. Well, it's one of those things that doesn't go away. But Cecil right. said his dad had the same thing, or his grandfather, somebody had yeah. in his life had this, and he got he bought me this special pillow. It was like one of those donut pillows when right, you have right. uh, hemorrhoids or something. Right. But it, it was it was it totally worked, and it, it fixed my back. And now I don't need it. I'm sitting in my old chair, the one that I thought gave it to me in the first place. And now my back's stronger than ever. Yeah, my Kelsey and my butt pillow. Yeah, <laughs> Cecil did that. I thought he was making a joke. I was like, are you fucking with me? Yeah, right, right, right. Like I said, when you, when you have a bout of something and then you have to get a butt pillow, you know yeah. you're older. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you got to deal with these things. Uh, I'll send you my butt pillow. <laughs> yeah and then i'll send you i'll send you the um the daniel warren johnson um instagram stuff that i say yes i want that file yeah, yeah. i want to look through it i'm, and, I'm uh, getting one for james heron going too because i haven't seen yeah. they produce work so fast there's Thank so you. much i haven't seen really impressive what yeah, british one my my chair that i'm using right now too the seat the seat cushion is all broke down so i'm basically yeah. sitting on like a bad seat cushion on it but um, I bought a new chair. The new chairs aren't good, man. I, I don't know. Like, yeah. My, I don't like them. I, if Ethan has a chair that he sent me a link to, and I still have not gotten it, but he swears by it. And it looks like this old office chair I had from the 60s that was literally like as strong as a tank. Yeah. And it was solid, solid old school engineering. I still have my first chair in the garage that I used for 20 years. And it's still like, it works great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just it's it's not it's it's like kind of you have to sit up kind of more like oh like yeah it, it was it was a chair I got at Wildstorm, I think, and they just they let me take it home when the studio oh, nice. It's funny because uh, I guess I don't have any Wildstorm bookshelves here. I have three bookshelves from Wildstorm in my store. <laughs> they were like, Do you want to take them? Take them because they're just we're getting rid of all of it at the end. Mm, man, I wish I got one of those. Thank you, Herman, for the nice compliment. Yeah, nice. Look, the the best I love advice. 90s British art, comic book art. The best advice I can give to anyone interested in drawing is never ever give up, because yeah. I, I failed so many more times than I succeeded to get to where I'm at today. But 14 years of sticking to it and always coming back and getting up to the plate, and I mean, it's like anybody that's followed my career knows it's been really. It was really hard. I was very picky. Um, I had this perfectionist syndrome in my head where nothing was good enough. And um, Dude, I, I fail every time I put pen to paper. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a constant. You just got to keep rolling with it. Turn those failures into successes. And, and, and it's weird. You'll just all of a sudden one day you'll wake up and you'll kind of have a handle on something like for me perspective. I, mm. I tried to learn perspective so many times I would read the books and I'd get like you know, 16 pages into it and be like, oh, I need a nap. This is like mm. so much information. And then one day I woke up and I was like, I kind of understand all this now. Yeah, you're you're doing what I call theatrical perspective, which is like uh, the cardinal directions, left, right, up, down. Uh, uh, you don't do, and, and it's great. Um, uh, Bacalo, that's all he does. He rarely okay. ever does um, uh, a dramatic, you know, three point oh. low angle shot and extreme perspective. Oh, right, right, right. That kind of stuff takes time. Mignola does cardinal directions. He does yeah. theatrical staging, you know, where it's straight on, you know, it's very rarely uh, at an angle. Yeah. You know, he's gotten even better at it where he can do 
now he has the floor and the ceiling a lot of times. Uh -huh. Whereas before he was even flatter, where those floor and ceilings were just flat, right. standing on that plane. So yeah, he gotten better at that. But I, I'll definitely, I'll definitely keep that in mind because um, I love theatrical staging. I love it a lot, actually. So yeah, but I, I definitely, I definitely want some uh, three point perspective and stuff that's maybe a little more. Scary. Use it for the drama moments, you know. Like we were looking at Daniel's stuff, yeah. and he's. It's like when he's having a talking scene. You know, it's very structured, you know, and then it, man, he explodes it with the action, with the extreme angles and bending characters to the extreme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, and it's funny. It's uh, feedback that I give some of my patrons is like, cause people, when they're learning to draw, they'll like, they'll get brave and they'll kind of try like forced perspective in like one panel. And mm -hmm. I tell them a lot of times I say, you know, when you only use it once in a while, sometimes it can look more like a drawing mistake. I mean, you definitely need to have elements of it sort of appearing enough that it feels like one of the flavors that you deliver. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll, they'll try to push one shot and it's like uh, kind of, yeah, you need a little bit more of that seasoning spread out. Yeah. Mm, seasoning is making me think of food. Yeah. Well, go get what do you, have, <laughs> what do you, what do you what's your snack today. I think I think I'm just gonna do. Um, man, I think in sandwiches, just a nice easy day. Yeah. Either that or no, no, no. I might do French toast because I got some old bread I need to get rid of, and I love hitting the French toast action on that. Now, stuff. Do you do you have bacon with your French toast or sausages? Mm, that sounds good though. I, I would need bacon. a little. I would need a little salty meat on the side. <laughs> balance the sweet i'm almost a vegetarian i mean like i can eat uh, vegetable soup with no no meat in it no beef now you, but now you said that you were having beef you were making beef stew the other day yeah i did but I, I was wondering whether or not i was going to have the beef in it and j or just use the bouillon but uh yeah i broke down and did some stew Ooh, when you said when you said bu bouillon you said it with your cajun accent bouillon yeah bouillon. yeah put a little bouillon up in there What's his? What's what's my favorite? What's the? Is it up? I guarantee. Yeah. yeah what's his name? Uh, Justin Wilson. Yeah. I love Justin. <laughs> so what what I bought is my local store had a blowout sale on um their TGI F Friday TGI Fridays um hamburgers patties mm. but their cheddar cheese and bacon and um but they were like they normally they're like fourteen bucks for a box of these things they were on sale for six. Mm -hmm. So, that's not bad i mean i know it's a huge deal so i bought them <laughs> I, everyone's i like those occasionally because sometimes you just want to like get a burger fast you know you don't want to yeah. have to like mash up the meat and mix it all up with the eggs and the oh yeah adam man. hughes adam hughes made a dish for my me and my wife um when he was here in san diego and it was pasta with sausage and scrambled egg oh it's weird not, he called it grub i think was his name for it or he had a name for it <laughs> But, um, that sounds very Adam for some reason. I know. Yeah, yeah. So he, would, he, would, he would make the pasta, and then he would fry up all the sausage like in a pan with the yeah. like so that then he put the scrambled egg in it, and then he would pour that all over the um. Pasta. Was it good? It was good. It's like okay, it, if it's good, it's it good. Felt, you know, but... it felt like stoner college guy food. <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I made start. I used to do uh, back in before the internet days or before the YouTube days. We did like uh, blogs and things like that. And I had a whole series of uh, cooking for young artists because, like, when I was a young artist, and as many of us do, we go to fast food, and it's such a bad thing to do when you're sedentary. So, like, I came up with this. Like, uh, uh, my grandmother used to give me three can meal recipes where you can uh, take like three cans and make like a delicious soup out of it that you can eat for days, you know? And so it's a lot cheaper. It's a lot better for you, you know, easy, simple foods, just make burritos, just easy can yeah. of beans, some salsa, some onions, you know, uh, these things are easy to do for these, you know, but I don't know how people are today. If kids are maybe the young people are now more health conscious and more watching what they eat, less fast food, but my, my daughter is a vegetarian and she has been mm. for a while, but it was like, she just, just, just decided at some point she didn't want to eat meat. And I was like, all right. And she really has never gone back on it. She'll eat fish occasionally, mm. but, um, I, I normally don't eat beef or pork. Not like I don't have anything against them, but normally if I'm going to eat meat, it's chicken, like chicken. Yeah. Bread. I eat a lot of chicken. Yeah. Chicken. Good. Do you ever make gumbo? Yes. I'm not a huge gumbo fan. Um, uh, uh, I'm more, I love jambalaya. 
Oh, mm. God, that's what I meant, actually, when I said gumbo. I meant jambalaya. Dude, jambalaya is so freaking good. We make it a bit drier. We make it like a rice dish with uh, yeah. sausage and chicken and uh, oh, onions yeah. and shrimp. Uh, I've never done that in jambalaya, but it would be good. I think oh, it would be delicious. Oh, I usually man. use shrimp and gumbo. But... Freaking love jambalaya. jambalaya. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> we actually, I'm going to think about doing that sometime soon, uh, some jambalaya. Uh, that'd be one to like do at a, uh, you know, at a, well, I was about to say at a convention, but I'm like, not sure how you, it, you'd have to have a convention with a, <laughs> I could bring my camp and set up, make some jambalaya for everybody. <laughs> oh God, Brahmin. I used to eat cup of noodles all the time and it's like, yeah. Dude, well, that's uh, the thing. It's like, okay, everybody's going to eat ramen or fast food. And it's like, man, there's so many things you can do that are as easy as making a thing of ramen soup. Right. That are like way better. You yeah, know, but ramen, I love ramen. Don't get me wrong. I do love like, my ramen. At Wildstorm, I could get a cup of noodles, I think, for 50 cents out of like the vending machine. So that mm. was like, I would I would do that for my cheap lunches or I would buy toast from the deli downstairs. But for like five or 10 bucks, you can get um, enough groceries to basically eat all <laughs> week, you know? <laughs> I look for the fan fest Kelsey outside just smoking and dishing out spoons worth of yeah I'm gonna have the yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna have the soup kitchen sure. outside the con like you want jambalaya or do you want my <laughs> chicken stew got just some sausages stew. burning on the grill over here now yeah. what do you think do you like crawfish or not yeah shit yeah crawfish boil yeah. man dude, dude a crawfish boil at the con I might I might look into that because we um those are little portable setups and I'm bringing my, I'm driving up there. So I might be able to do something like that. That'd be fun. Are, uh, how close are you to where Trent Reznor lived? <laughs> where in Louisiana? He lived in Louisiana. Yeah. For a while. He had a house. I didn't know that. He probably lived closer to new Orleans, which I'm like two hours away. Roughly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Robert I'll drive down there occasionally. It's a, on a certain type of weather. It looks so mean. That's a mean looking city from certain angles. Even though it's not that big, man, when it's rainy, it looks mean. <laughs> oh, right. You could film Batman there and certain, you know, just shoot it just right yeah. so it always looks busy. Pittsburgh was like that to me. When, yeah. my, band, when my band was on tour and we went to it Pittsburgh, I was like, man, this is Gotham. Like, Yeah. I like that, though, because it's I wouldn't want to live in a place. Like, well, I do, actually. But, you know, when <laughs> – but, you know, when – I don't know. It's some some kind of some good for the artist's soul to have like that. I remember when uh, I met these old artists from New York from the seventies, and they were talking about how much Times Square had changed. And he, he one of them referred to Times Square was like his muse that had been killed because he's like, anytime I need an idea, I just walk down to like Times Square, you know. And there's always some drama going on, right? And then now it's like Disneyland. Yeah, well. Oh, check this out. So they do outdoor crawfish boils in um Austin. Yeah. Nice. H E B. H E B's coming here, I think, uh to Louisiana. What's H E B? That's just a, a store, mostly uh oh. Texas and um Oh, okay. I'm surprised you guys don't have it in West Coast. I think you do, Maya. Yeah. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of a dumb. You man. guys are Ralph's people. We have Ralph's at a, a store called Vaughn's. Yeah. NS HEB is a lot like Ralph's in a but better. <laughs> I went to Ralph's. I went to Ralph's this morning. They're they have a bakery. Their bagels look so bad. I'm not like a bagel yeah. snob, but it was like I saw the bagels and I was like, I no way. <laughs> bagel snob. <laughs> well, some people are. If, if you're like a New Yorker, it's like pizza. Like no pizza is as good as New York pizza. Uh, they'd hate they'd hate our bagels. Then uh, <laughs> I just get the Linders. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Linders bagels. I yeah. I, I've ate many, many Lenders bagels. All right, well, you go get lunch. I go eat one right now. <laughs> Do you have the onion or plain? They stopped carrying the onion ones around oh, here, no. man. So the I got the plain. Bag. But yeah, the onion ones are the best, man. How can they? Like, how can it? That used to drive me nuts at like Starbucks. Like, like, and I don't. Just I never stop selling I, things. Yeah, I, well, I never order food at Starbucks, but it's like every day I would see people come in and they would like order a specific bagel, and they'd be like, "No, we're out of those." But they'd have like the ones that no one buys. Yeah. So like, why don't you just? Why don't you just order a shit ton of the ones that people love and stop with this fucking nonsense? Of it must stuff. have something to do with like when you buy. Uh, like a a bag sure. of mixed bag of candy, yeah, and it's like you really want the Snickers bars, but 
So they're going to have less of those. Yeah, there's two Snickers bars and then. Yeah. So you'll buy another bag to get more, you know, but. Seven Laffy Tappies or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I got to go pee. Things okay. are spiraling right. downhill quickly. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for uh, coming by. If you just are tuning in, check it out. Daniel Warren Johnson actually showed up and was in the chat. So this is quite an honor for us. Gave and us uh, some behind the scenes thank, tidbits on his work. Thank you for the super chat, Dustin. And uh, thank you for being here, Kelsey. I appreciate it. Always. Yeah. Always so, fun. okay. We're going to end the broadcast. Everyone have a great day. I'm going to take down our Christmas tree. Finally, <laughs> I'm to put it in the garage. <laughs> it's a fake I'm one. Gonna, I'm going to take All my right. beard off. Finally. Okay. Bye. See you guys later. <laughs> later. <laughs>